Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show, the 20 Sides Show, here on a Tuesday. I haven't done a Tuesday game in a while. Um, welcome. We are playing Temple of Elemental Evil here uh, tonight. And this is, we are, we are getting to the final, I mean, I guess literally, I think we're in the final chapter of Temple of Elemental Evil. And so... Um, if you've been following along with this campaign, this is our uh, community campaign. This is where members of our community uh, kind of get to jump into games with one another. Each group is uh, typically a different mix mash of uh, characters that have been running around in the campaign. Um, but we've just moved into a piece here Whoa, where games, um, I had to kind of make static groups for uh, all of the remaining active players in the campaign and so each one of them is Whoa, going after a game, similar man. but yet different objective um so we're gonna we're gonna see where that leads us here and, and thanks right off the bat uh everyone for the cheers i appreciate that um yeah so this if this is your first time uh stopping by the channel um or you're watching this on youtube um realize that uh you're, you're, well, you, first of all, you're probably a fan of some of this original Adventures Reincarnated content. Uh, we've done every one of them on the channel here so far. And usually I run that as sort of our drop-in, drop-out game. So if you're ever looking to get into one of these games, uh, real easy to do. Just swing on over and jump into our Discord server. I'm going to put the link to the Discord server here in our Twitch chat. If you're watching us on YouTube... Just check the info section um, description of the video, and I'll have a link in there as well. Um, so these have been a lot of fun. We've had a lot of fun. Uh, kind of, it's kind of old school, pretty simple. Usually you're r rolling right into initiative pretty quick and beating up some monsters. But sometimes we have some sessions that are more RP or uh, exploratory. Whoa, and so jams, that's probably, honestly, what this session will end up being, unless we've got some <laughs> devilish characters in the audience that are going to just start uh, buying wandering monsters or something. But um, hopefully it's a little bit more different flavor, different taste from uh, the rest of the campaign. So, yeah, definitely jump into our Discord. Thank you, uh, the Potato Lion, for the cheer. Um and Sith Lord Dave is already um, trolling us a little bit. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, so come join our Discord, get to know us, and uh, try to get into a game. Uh, whether it's this or uh, we've got a lot of DMs um, that are actively recruiting for campaigns or one shots and whatnot. So it's a great place just to come and hang out and get to know some of the other 20 sides folks um i guess the only other like big announcement i have is we are uh, once again going to be raising some money for the center for suicide awareness uh this year um that's something that we've done every year since 2019 i want to say um and so we're doing that once again uh this time kind of just like with our extra life it used to be just i would run a game and that was kind of it then we got another everybody's kind of pitching in and running games which is great and so we're going to have a whole week uh this time around of uh um games to help raise money for the centers uh, for suicide awareness uh they're the reason i know about them is because they're local to wisconsin and so the university where i work at um really promotes their hope line which is a text and emotional support uh uh service uh with trained crisis counselors um, and it, it is such a, a great resource. It gets used and is very accessible to people. It's something I believe in. It's got, uh, not just uh, national reach, but international reach. And so, um, sort of feel like they're, and they they do great outreach with the gaming community. They go to all the PAX events, uh, and they really get out there and have identified that, you know, um, there's a need in the gaming community for, for such a resource. And so Whoa, really chance, appreciate man. everything that they do. And, um, happy happy to support so come and check us out um i want to say i'm hesitant Whoa, to the name the dates game, i think it's may 9th is the first day i think that's a week um events of events uh starting may 9th that we're going to have so uh keep an eye out for the schedule and um yeah come come hang out i'm sure 
there's probably going to be some recruiting for those events as well. So jump in the Discord and you might, yeah, Casey's got going to be running quiet here. So um, it's not just D&D. Whoa, I guess that's the other thing. It's not just D&D. We do all sorts of tabletop games from things like the quiet year. I think there's uh, some Star Wars Saga edition that Dave was going to do. I'm doing a D&D 5th edition. Winston's doing a uh, Mouse Ritter, a, a, a critter-themed uh, fantasy role-playing. So lots of stuff to come and get involved with. So hope you'll come and see us in the Discord. Uh, thank you all for the, the cheer. It looks like we got the hype train is in motion. So appreciate that. Thank you all so much for that. So um, a little bit, I'll give a little context here for not just the audience, but probably some of the players, If uh, just in case it's been a little bit since you, if you didn't catch that last session, uh, just to kind of catch you up with where we are at, and then we'll do some character introductions. Um, but where our session begins, we're picking up just moments after the battle on the fourth level of the temple, uh, at the greater temple, um, where the heroes from Hamlet uh, delved down in an attempt to have a direct confrontation with Larith the Beautiful. Um, it was there, Larith was amassing a force uh, to try to stomp out the resistance that had come to his doorstep and uh, try to solidify his control of the temple uh, for his master, Ayaz. Um, the east and west wings of the fourth level contained uh, basically barracks, which housed giants, ettins, trolls, bugbears and the like um, that have been brought to the temple from far to the from far, far to the north where the lands of Ayas where his empire was uh, beginning to wage war on the nations of Firiandi and Valuna um, so our adventuring party which numbers some I guess 16 player characters 17 player characters something like that um a number of NPCs, they kind of split into basically three parties with two of the groups going to the east and west barracks to try to hold off uh, the volume of forces that would come out after um, the group. And then the third party went north to the temple to confront Larith. And confront him they did. During the battle that ensued, though, um, the party was doing pretty well against Larith and dispatching his forces, but then... They must have been doing too well because Ayaz the Old himself appeared and directly intervened in the battle, violating a sort of rule that is in place, which allowed, um, well, after he had destroyed Fragorak, the sword of Prince uh, Thrommel IV, his legendary sword, um... He even killed off a couple of the NPCs. For a moment, we had a dead Yede and we had a dead Elmo, um, but because he violated um, this sort of divine rule, it allowed St. Cuthbert himself to manifest and arrive to counteract the injustice that he was bringing in. So St. Cuthbert revived both Yede and Elmo and uh, went to it to uh, uh, go after Ayaz, but not before he gave a directive uh, to everyone involved that the only way to destroy the temple, the only way to send uh, Zagatmoy back to the abyss, essentially, was through the Golden Skull, which Humboldt is in possession of currently. But the Golden Skull is incomplete. There are four gemstones, one that uh, is attuned to each elemental plane, and those four things are missing. And St. Cuthbert had uh, let you in on... Um, I guess the secret of where they are. They're contained within the elemental nodes, and that is where Zagamoy has hidden them. So the four groups have now dispersed and have, are all undertaking one of the nodes in hopes of finding their elemental gem to complete the Golden Skull, and only then can it be destroyed and kind of end this so that the cycle doesn't continue and we don't have another one of these things happening in 50 years. And so uh, that is where we're at. Um... I think that's probably where we will do our character introductions. And so I think it's no secret at this point, you're heading to the water node. And so that is sort of what we're going to open up with for our RP question. We're going to have each of our characters tell us a little something about themselves. 
Um, but also tell us about sort of your character's relationship to water. Um, have they, have they been seafaring before? Do they have a story about it? Whatever that question or prompt means to you, uh, share a little something about that. And so I think we will start things off with Galileo. I'm Galileo. I'm playing a, uh, druid uh, for ball and uh, Galileo's uh, he's he's uh, rather curious about about water because he's he where he comes from there there never was a lot of it there was a few small ponds and a few streams but no no very large body of water um and since he's a druid he is familiar with many types of uh wildlife and animals but not so much the wildlife that is in the bottom of the sea and uh he'd he'd be curious to to experience that i let's see how long that curiosity uh <laughs> stays peaked um cool let's go next then to uh casey and humboldt hey i'm casey i'm playing humboldt a barbarous matchmaker and um oh uh water eh? um see um i'm fond of earth because you can travel over it i'm fond of air and wind because that can bring the horizon to you uh fire's a bit fiddly um but water i don't particularly get along with um, cause water's always trying to take you with it. Um, but it don't let you decide much where you're going to. And I've never seen a beast that wanted people off its back more than an ocean. I was out there and they're like, oh, I, yes, come sail. I took a step onto this ship, lost my lunch in mm, seconds. Never want to be back on one again. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So that's humbled. Um, I'm getting the sense it's going to be a very interesting little romp through the <laughs> water node. Let's hear from uh, from Chris, who's playing Donovan. Good evening. Uh, my name is Chris. I am playing Votary Donovan Lockwood, a fifth level paladin of uh, St. Cuthbert. Uh, it had been brought down to this area from the uh, from Valuna and the war that was uh, raging there to uh, check on the temple. <clears throat> Originally, uh, Donovan was from Divers. He served in the in the church there, and uh, so the uh, near Div is. Uh, I mean, you know, it's just right on the coast of the near Div, so he. He's had a lot of experience looking at water, probably not a whole lot on it, uh, knowing that uh, paladins, heavy armor, and water tend to not mix real well. Um, probably the only time that he would have spent any time on the water was when he went to Valona. The quickest route would have been to uh, go up the Velverdiva up into uh, Valona and that, so they... I'm sure there was a number of uh, the current host that's up there that was from divers or whatever would have taken river barges and stuff up that way. So, All right. And then uh, lastly, we have Ed, who is playing Teasley. And I'm just based on a, a snippet of a comment <laughs> that Ed put in our group chat earlier. I'm really curious to see the take on this. Right. I'm Ed. I, I'm playing Teasley Sline. I'm a, I'm a halfling. Um, Halfling Sorcerer, currently decked out in me finest slinky black Morticia Adams dress. Uh, and um, so you've never heard stories about about seafaring halflings, and that's because we don't do it. We don't do that at all. And frankly, I'm, I can swim a little if, if it's like the water's not moving, um, but I don't like to be wet. It also it makes my sequins go all funny. 
So we will see to what lengths Teasley tries to go to maybe avoid being wet. I don't know. So uh, we're about to find out because uh, basically, okay, moments, this is sort of important. I want to give you this information just in case it comes up later, and I'm sure it will at some point. Um, but as you were running down the hallway, the four of you kind of just in the chaos were the four that went down this one particular hallway. And um, once you get to the end That's of that hallway... because Humble stuck my, took my leash. Um, look, shiny! Shiny! <laughs> okay, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm worried about you know, having the golden skull be the, the carrot, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, there it is. <laughs> oh, uh, Fragorak, uh, Scabbard, 35,000 in gems. Ready, right here, Taisley, come on! Much safer. Um... So as you're running down that corridor, um, one of the things that happened during the battle was uh, Donovan had used uh, one of his paladin abilities to kind of disperse the gargoyles. So a number of them had kind of gone down each of the, the hallways. And so there are a number of gargoyles that were down there, as well as a hill giant, uh, seemingly stationed and posted up by um, this arcane circle, literally a circle, the symbol of the, the water cult. Um, on the ground. And so as you made your way to the gate, um, that's when you would, you would start to feel the sensation of, okay, it's working. It's, it's a teleportation circle. Um, the whole room sort of giving a sort of that dizzying sensation, kind of like the wobbly, the walls kind of start to kind of move and such, but you, Maybe this explains some of the damage that some of you maybe have taken, uh, maybe right there in that moment, because it doesn't didn't take place immediately. It took the equivalent of three rounds before you were teleported through and uh, brought to the water node. And so just something to pay attention to, because at some point you may find another uh, teleportation uh, circle like this. Um, your characters would know that it wasn't instantaneous. You actually had to... Uh, battle against those things for a little bit um but uh you managed to do so you're all feeling the dizzying sensation of the room uh waning and transitioning into sort of a cool mist and suddenly uh the floor beneath your feet seems to uh, have escaped you and now you were falling and there's sort of a faint sizzle as you popping into this new environment your ears pop um, as you're descending an incredible uh, distance maybe 150 feet or so as you free fall down and drop with a splash into warm water and as you can see where you are on the map um, you kind of get a sense maybe a little bit it's hazy all around you but um, there is sort of a, a dim light that seems to filter down from somewhere, um, but it's very kind of cloudy and misty and foggy. And so you have a hard time kind of getting the parameters of this new environment that you're in. Um, but it sort of gives you the sensation of maybe being on a beach and sort of the smell of uh, salt water, uh, like an ocean um, nearby. You can hear kind of the... Um, uh, tumultuous waves crashing on maybe rocks out in the distance as you're dropping you kind of see even uh, sort of some big kind of craggy rocks that protrude up and out of the water where you drop um, so you've got a visibility out about maybe 150 200 feet out um, from you um, and then everything's just sort of a haze beyond that um, as you came down and, and, and dropped into this water, you sort of got the sense that um, there was some kind of maybe like a coral boundary or something that enclosed this pond that you're dropping into. Um, but as soon as you hit the water, it's it's sort of you lose vision of it. Maybe you were above kind of the mist or whatever, and you had better vantage point as you're dropping, and now you a little discombobulated a bit. Um and so as you're splashing into the water, um, I'm going to check in first with Donovan because you were sinking um, as you splashed down into this water. Your armor sort of weighing down on you. Um, what would you like to uh, do? Am I, I'm going to attempt to stay above water long enough to at least get a breath. And yeah. holler for help. 
And if I am sinking, I am going to be doing my best to strip breastplate off uh, and attempt to attempt to stay afloat here. Give me a strength athletics check at disadvantage. Okay, so there's a 10 and a 12 in there. So the 10 is a 15. So you um, are instinctually, you start kind of swimming and uh, it's clunky it's tough um you got i think cha is it chain mail there's magical chain mail that you were wearing so correct you're you're managing to stay afloat here uh but it is very tiring to do so um but you're above water right now and um for all of you the rest of you are having no problem at the moment i don't think any of the rest of you casey you're you're medium armor right uh, half, so you're half plate, but still benefiting from freedom of movement. Okay, yeah. So you're you're having no problem. You know, given maybe enough time, you might start to get a little weary or tired or whatnot. But uh, no problem keeping yourself up um, on the surface of the water. As you look down, the water here it's pretty clear water. You get the sense it's probably maybe ten feet deep. It's not terribly deep, um, and it's sort of a sandy. Um, you know, uh, floor uh, to the water. And, um, yeah, it's it's fairly warm, I would say. Um, it's, not, it's not an uncomfortable water. All um, around, you a you it might have now got a little warmer. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, if, if I can, I'll, I'll try and help Donovan to... Uh, stay afloat i'm i'm rather large and i'm not great swimmer but i float pretty easy <laughs> okay um maybe helps a, a little bit um you do still have to kind of concentrate on yourself a bit but i mean this is helpful in the short term and uh, donovan seems to be managing okay right now uh and we can see out as far as visual on foundry correct Correct. I would say for the most part, um, it sort of looks the same on all direction. Uh, you can kind of see, again, these kind of outcroppings of rock that maybe go up from 40 to 60 feet out from the water. Um, but beyond that, it looks like more more water. And I just want to give a thank you to Always a Wolf. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, taking a quick spin around, whichever one of these things, you know, these somewhat land masses or whatever that we see, uh, whichever one looks the craggiest, uh, I want to holler out to everybody, help me get there. And I point to whichever one it is. So, okay. We you just let me know. Maybe this one over here. Um, Maybe that one or maybe this one down here kind of look like maybe the largest. Now, these things, if you're, a, you probably could attempt to kind of climb up them, but it'd be, they're pretty steep. And so it'd be like kind of, you know, wall climbing up a, a sheer surface and probably pretty I mainly, slick. I mainly just want something to be able to grab onto so I don't aren't die. quite so high that you could stand on, you know, that are under the water. Uh, I'm sorry. Say that again. I said there, there, uh, there may be some shallower rocks that are just under the water that he could stand on. You know, get close to one of those, and it probably has some rocks that are going up. You know, uh, from underneath the water. Yeah, you want to go over there and check that out. Um, I guess we'll just check in. Uh... Anything humbled or teasly that uh, you're doing differently or? Flailing. Flailing, <laughs> yeah. Um, your humbled instincts are kicking in. You're doing okay, but yeah, maybe it's like kind of like a doggy paddle or something to keep yourself. I'm glad humble. I don't carry much. 
Humboldt like sinks down to the bottom, pops up, tries to lay his shield down like to see if he can get that to float. Pops down to the bottom, jumps up, tries to lay the other shield he was carrying down, see if that'll float. If they float, cool. If not, his original goes and he keeps the one from the uh, commander because it just looked cool. Yeah, and... they don't they don't float here, but um, eh. you test um, it out. And... I thought that was how boats worked. Um, which way? That way? Okay. Splash, splash, splash. Yeah, so, I'll start heading in this direction. Okay, so as you start going in that direction, um, Donovan, give me a, a constitution ability check. Mm -mm. And so it is... Um, you're doing fine, like you're you're swimming and everything, but by the time you get there, you're pretty your arms are just like shot to hell. And so you're gonna have a level of exhaustion uh by the time you get there. Okay. I'm I'm a druid, so I I I let them hold on to my shield, which I I, I have wooden shields, so mine floats. Uh, yeah, it, it maybe gives like a little bit of help or whatnot, but still the tire it's still tiring to get over there, yeah. even even with a little floaty. Um but you manage to get over there. Um the uh I guess the bad news is that um uh, there isn't really like a great place to like stand. You can certainly get over there and kind of grab onto a piece of it to kind of give yourself a little bit of respite. Um but uh that aside, you do then see that just around uh, to the other side of it is that coral reef that juts up um, out of the uh, surface of the water. And that does seem quite, quite large um, and could be it's sort of an outcropping that you could probably a actively get onto and stand upon. Um, it's just like kind of coral outcroppings, little nooks and crannies of uh, this coral reef underneath the water that seems to... Um, you can see like colorful fish kind of jut jutting in and out of it, maybe like eels and different different wildlife. Um, it's a very active, vibrant ecosystem here. Um, Galileo, do you know anything about them sort of critters? About about what? About them sort of critters. Them um, whatever they are. I think if you uh... fried them in butter, you could they'd crisp up nice. Afraid I don't know a lot about the the deep sea critters, so um, no, haven't seen them before. Oh, so are um no real no one if they're the bitey type. No, you can most, you most can try things, pat them. Most of the things that you see are rather small kind of wildlife um nothing that looks like too monstrous or with big big huge like teeth or anything like that but it's still early so <laughs> you, you you gotta watch out even if they don't want to eat you they might have some defense that you know poison you or something so i keep well, don't try and touch me poison you say um some of them, not all. Um, you see, um, as you're kind of looking over there, trying to stay away from anything that looks too, I don't know, you're, you're just looking on the lookout for threats, I guess. Um, you do see uh, one little bit of wildlife that sort of startles you. Um, and it's sort of this, it almost looks like, at first like a school of fish but um where the fish it has little fins and a tail scales body of a fish but then its head is just like this one singular eyeball with kind of protruding off of it and they're swimming they all kind of stop a little eyeball like looks over at your group and in unison they just kind of halt and then they just kind of divert away and swim off into uh, the darkness. Well, that's this disconcerting. Sounds... Hmm. It sounds very familiar. Um, oh, 
I, I don't know that that's normal or not, but I feel not. Um, I'm feeling very seen at the moment. Is there... Um, hmm. Well, we're going to need to rest because I can't keep swimming. So... Uh, do you think? Do you think if we got up on top of that bit over there, I could lay my shield down, Galileo could your, lay your shield down, and we could kind of have a sit on the shields on the, um, on the coral reef. Yeah, kind of make ourselves a little platform. Um. Uh, yeah. Why not? Um. Well, if you don't know, I don't know. So let's. I, I think we could. I seems pretty solid. So we'll, uh, Humble will, like, take his fancy new stick, give the coral a bit of a poke, try and find a semi-solid spot, and set the shield down to see if he can clamber up on top of it and find a semi-dry, semi-solid spot. Yeah, you got it. Uh, easy enough to climb up onto this, uh, natural structure. Um, on the other side... The, uh, you see that there is also water that's kind of hitting up against this um, upraised uh, coral uh, structure. And that water isn't as calm as the water in the center. And it actually seems like there's kind of waves that kind of like splash up against this um, coral reef that you're standing on. And there's sort of like, you know, like foam that kind of collects up on the, the edge of it there. Hi. Um, so, um, a lot of us look like we're bleeding. Do we try and scamper a bit in that way or that way? Or try and settle here? Um, and well, because maybe... Maybe like right up against that rock that's in that's coming out of the coral, we could get a little cover there. I agree with that. Um, I. Hey, Alex, I have a couple questions. Uh, just kind of about the general environment. What is the, uh, like the lighting situation? Where is light coming from? It seems um, to be coming from up above. Uh, sort of. You get the sense that maybe it would be bright if it wasn't for the mist that's sort of filtering it. So it's a dim light. Um, so that's what sort of hampers your visibility a bit. But um, there is light. Like, you, you can see pretty plainly without lighting a torch or whatever. Okay. Um, one other thing that I want to do as, I, as I'm panting and uh, get out of the water as I, you know, kind of maybe scoot around using this rock outcropping uh i am going to take a handful of that water and swish it in my mouth i won't okay. swallow it but is it fresh or is it salt or from inside the lake here uh it seems yeah. to be fresh water um it, you know your your instinct is it's potable and uh doesn't have a it actually is it's probably some of the finest quality water that you've ever tasted Okay, well, I will uh, I will take another handful and drink it. See if there's any ill effects. No, it uh, doesn't, doesn't seem to be. Let everybody know that we have fresh water, at least, whether we have food or, or not. We can eat fish, I bet. Um, I have um, one damp ration. <laughs> okay. Um. Though, uh, not to be greedy, um, but I got a new stick, and I'd really like to practice with it for about an hour or so. Um, because it it's got a thing, and I've seen it do the thing, but I can't figure out how to do the thing yet. Well, I, I don't see anything really pulling us anywhere in a in a timely manner. Oh, um, speaking of timely, <laughs> um, does anyone know how a golden skull works? Because aside from like, is it? Did we just push the gems in, or 
like I don't know that the wizard would have been like, oh, I got to reach the skull if you just push gems in it. Like, um, it, uh, the, on, right. the, on, the only thing oh. I would say, it probably is not a good idea to put the gems in the skull. I'm oh, guessing uh, completing that, it would be a bad thing. No, uh, oh, Cuthbert I, said, put the gems in this. Almost certain. That's I like had... a future Teasley problem, though, because right now we don't have a gem. <laughs> yeah, right. But that's that's true. Um, oh, Teasley, I... Mm. As, uh, as Humboldt is, is showing the skull and everything, you notice that a number of those fish with the eyeballs seem to be, like, coming pretty close to, like, the coral reef um, from the the kind of coming out of the, the reef, the little nooks and crannies. And the, they're all kind of, like, staring up. And like looking at it, I I I don't like to look at those fish. Nor I. Oh, um, no. I they, put this they away seem for a moment. Doing having a pack mentality there. Um, there's eyes everywhere. Can I've you communicate with Bo? Uh. I don't think I can communicate with fish. Or I've got a crossbow. <laughs> That's the kind of communication. I um no I'm gonna crossbow. spread my bedroll out next to that pillar there. Okay. And so I can sit on it and not on the coral. Yeah, um, it's it would be very uncomfortable to lay straight on there, but at least the Bedroll gives you a little cushion. Do them fish have legs? Uh, they do not. No, they like I... like it, it. would look like an ordinary fish if it wasn't for the fact that it's just like an eyeball where like mouth and whatnot should be. Um. So so long as we're up here, and they're down there. I, I mean, think that's... your logic checks out, but as I look around, it's water. Everywhere. Um. So I'm thinking that when we do head out, we stick to the coral. And for that, because I don't want to go back in the water if I don't have to. Ah. Uh -uh. Um. I have a bit of oil, but I don't know that I want to pour oil in our drinking, possibly water, just to scare off some fishes. Ah. Uh. You think it would help if we uh, had some a torch or two lit here? Meanwhile, Maybe Teasley's taking his dress off and hanging it up to dry. We He's running we around stark, stark naked, stark naked now. <laughs> we may need to let you know take some time here to let our stuff dry out. Oh, I'm um, letting my stuff dry out for sure. That's um. Oh, uh, Donovan, um, yes. uh, you did get your ring. I did get my ring. I d didn't I give you a ring? Hang on. Um, sorry, I, I'll get, I got um, a bit, you know, ha not long ago. Um, here, uh, wait, uh, somewhere I got, um, what did I get for you? Did I get the stick? Did I get the mace? Did I get the ring? I think I got a ring for you. And um, maybe a stick. So Humboldt had a ring of free action uh, to give to someone, and I think Donovan wanted it. Um, and also, I forget if it was the Staff of Striking or the Mace that you wanted, but whichever one of those, just to make sure you got that thing. Mace of Disruption, yeah, that's right. Yep. Um, oh, yeah, ah, here. There's that. Um, there's that. Um, uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to swim quite as well in, in about a half hour. Uh, but before then, um, well, I still got a little bit of Fragorak Blessing and a few shards in my palms. Those hurt. Um, should be fine. So as um, as you're sort of discussing trading items, Teasley's in the background getting comfy. Um, those fish that are collecting on the shoreline there, um, on the inside of the pool, their eyes all just start to glow. 
and there's sort of a low hum in the air, and I need Humboldt, mm -hmm. Donovan, and um, Galileo give me wisdom saving throws. My specialty. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, Teasley, you're kind of like further out like you maybe are noticing this while you're doing your things that they're all like kind of looking into yeah. the water and I, I figured I walked up to like right over there next to that pillar yeah yeah so you're some distance away and uh there's some stellar rolls happening here I didn't mention it but you did get uh some re-rolls that were purchased so there's Ooh. five player re-rolls in the pot here if uh Donovan you would like to use one yeah anybody mind use it <laughs> this seems bad Yes. And you manage to um, kind of shake off the effect. Like, you sort of feel like maybe a little drowsy for just a spell. Um, and as you all kind of are shaking the effect away, the fish just kind of disperse and then scatter and go back to their little crevices underneath the reef. Um, You all felt that, right? That was... yes. It's crossbow time. Um, Teasley's going to start singing a song. There's an awful lot of them. I, I'm, I'm thinking just if I see one, um, oh, I, you know what? I don't have the proper permit for it, but I could do a bit of spear fishing. And he'll tie a little rope to his... <laughs> I'll just take pot shots of the eye fish if he sees them coming by. Okay. Um, we'll say, you know, you, you, you take a shot at one and manage to, like, spirit they're they're just tiny little fish and so uh but by the time you get that one the rest of them have scattered and made themselves scarce and thank you percy for the dm re-roll bad fish yes bad fish. <laughs> all right so um teasley's getting set up how about the rest of you it, it sounded like there was a proposal to try to take a short rest on the table Yes. All right. I so, we can manage without more fish. Well, we will see. I will roll to see how this short rest goes here. And I will uh does the does the ring or the mace need attunement? I think both. Both. And you can attune to one at a time, right? I don't think you can double up. Uh, yeah, you can attune to one item in a short rest, I think. Yeah. That then I, I would right. choose the ring. Okay. I think that is far more valuable at this particular moment in time. So, short rest. Uh, just hold Maybe. on one second. <laughs> He's looking at a table. <laughs> yeah, 25 is low enough that I have to reference a table to see exactly what it is. Humboldt sitting there like, all right, stick. Um, so there was this legendary sword, and it let me down pretty hard. But you, you seem like a sensible stick. Okay. So uh, there is no um, random event that happens during the rest. So you can all short rest here, no problem. Let's see. However, there, there is something that is going to happen just after the short rest happens. Why? I could stop rolling ones on these hit dice. That'd be great. There we go. Oh, hit dice, you let me down. I think exhaustion's a long rest. Yes. Rats. Rats. All right. So, um, you all... Hour passes, uh, studying some magical items maybe that just were acquired um, in the battle with Lareth and Ayaz. Um, I'll wriggle back into my dress. 
getting comfy, getting into the proper attire um, for adventuring. And then there's, um, you start to notice like the water, maybe Galileo, uh, I'm probably going to keep going to you because you have this really, I know you have this really high passive perception. And so you just kind of notice that there's sort of waves are getting a little bit more um, powerful and larger and kind of crashing against the coral reef with just a little bit more oomph. Um, so it's like kind of like a Jurassic Park like moment. Like you're like, what well, could be creating that? And then suddenly the answer like appears and you just see this humongous shell, this turtle shell, just like come up and over the water line. And there's just like this ferocious, uh, angry, Face, almost like draconic looking scales on this what looks like a really elongated snapping turtle um, that kind of erupts up and over the the, the waves there and then um, not coming at you it's it's probably maybe like 150 feet away like you just see it like in the your long vision there you just see this ginormous thing can't miss it um, and then it goes down di like dives down into the sea and it creates these big waves that just start to push and and actually go up and over the coral reef and probably hit you and, um, you know, soak your, your, right your out. sleeping oh. bag and such. I don't what? think I can fight that. Did you? I really did... want some soup all of a sudden. What did we do? Um, if we could go not that way. That would be just fine. Right. So that really solidifies my not going in the water plan. I, 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 I hope we're too small for him to bother with. Well, you're bigger than me, so I'm better off there. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, so moving along, are we? You don't have to be bigger than the fish, just smaller than the next guy. <laughs> well, that's good for you. Yes. Um. Oh. I would say we walk the perimeter of this, stay to the top, and just see what we can see. Get an assessment of what we can, and then make a decision. Um. Uh, do you think there's any um sense in trying to mark where we showed up at? Um, I didn't see any like scribbles down in the sand, um, and I don't know how to get out of here. Um, but that bit looks about the same as that bit. Um, should we put like a bit of a mark, or is it sort of? Does anyone know I how these things work? I don't think it hurts anything. No, I don't have no. anything to mark it with. Well, um, these stones sticking out of the water are in kind of a circle there. I, I, I think we can look for those again. Oh, I am. And I can, um, let's see here. Uh, and he just tears off a bit of cloth and just hangs it, you know, up there-ish on a bit of the rock. Sure. Yeah, no problem. There, there isn't really a wind or a breeze or anything like that. So, um, as long as the environment stays like that, you don't get the sense that it's liable to blow away or anything. Um. So, do you prefer left or right, and which way round is it? No, I, I don't know. What it asked what that means, so I think yeah, that way. Okay. Sounds good. So you begin on foot. Um... Is the coral that treacherous, or is it fairly smooth to walk on? It's fair. It's like you probably want to be careful just because of little pock marks and whatnot. You might like kind of drop in or twist your ankle if you're not careful. But as long as you're staying, you know, slowly walking and not, you know, running across it, no problem. No checks needed or anything. So. Uh, begin to make your way up north just a bit. Um, when 
I guess I guess maybe just literally like 50 feet or so you walk forward and off in the haze you can kind of see the silhouette of what looks like maybe a person um with profile to like looking towards the fresh water um and it looks like maybe dipping like a bucket or something like you can basically just see a silhouette but it looks like they're maybe filling up a bucket or or dipping something into the water um, hey there, we can get directions. Or attacked. It, uh, well, uh, at least it would enter it right quick. Of the things I was expecting, directions were not on the list, but <laughs> I liked your optimism, Gale. Maybe he's got a boat. Um, is there any purpose in us even trying to sneak up? Because I'm a bit loud, and Donovan's a bit louder, and Galileo's a bit boisterous, and Teasley is a bit irascible. Behind, behind, but I could make a couple of us invisible. Um, that seems maybe excessive. Right. Well, we don't just talk to him, I, and then um, I can make us invisible if we have to run away. Oh, hi. Right. Um, I like that idea. Hello. Okay, so you uh, call out to this person. Um, you... I will have a javelin ready to throw if he makes a a move, and I okay. will be behind Donovan. <laughs> so you're all. I will be... Go ahead. I was, and I will be friendly because Galileo convinced me that the optimism is the best policy. So, uh, you call out and you get this, you know, kind of does like one of these things surveying the, the, where they heard this noise. Um, and you kind of get the sense, you kind of see a wave and, um, Oi, who, who, who be that uh, newcomers to, did you just arrive? Um, yes. Oh, uh, uh, we're we're a bit we're a bit lost right now. Uh, can you tell us w w something about this place? Uh, well, I I I reckon I can tell you quite a few things about this place. Um, uh, oh, just hold on, hold on, just one second, and you can kind of see him like kind of messing around with the bucket, and he kind of looks like he kind of sets it aside. Um, and then he starts to approach you. And can we meet? Can we meet him halfway? I would suggest to everybody. Oh, but I, um, I'm gonna use that to... halfling trait to hide behind Donovan <laughs> to to actually make the stealth check. Sounds good. Um, so uh, yeah, you kind of tell him that you wanna just meet halfway, and he says, "Oh." Oh, no problem. I, I understand um, you're being he hesitant to, uh, you know, we don't know each other. I suppose I should probably be more cautious around you as well. And uh, you can see a, a fellow with um, um, sort of a beard. He's wearing sort of padded armor. It's like a cloth-based uh, armor. He's got um, kind of this curious looking, um, it almost looks like, like the ball of like a flail or something that he's got kind of wrapped around his hand. But as you're kind of looking at it, it doesn't look like it's metal. It looks like it's maybe almost like a yarn type of material or something. It looks like it's kind of drenched or soaked. Um, in his other hand, he's got a lantern up. Um, lantern that just has a candle, kind of a stubby candle uh, that's lit in it. And he says... Uh, you can kind of notice, too, um, he doesn't have any pupils. And um, this is a trait of the Renhi, um, which are what we, what I have, I've reskinned them as the Asimar um, to give some, <laughs> some different player options, basically. Um, but they're sort of a nomadic people um, that, there's a lot of rumors about them that they're not maybe native to Orth, um, that they're kind of planar travelers a bit. 
Um, so there's lots of stories, a lot of like misconceptions about them. Uh, but anyway, he is one of these folk. Uh, many of them live in like little river boats and such on the Velva Diver uh, River. Um, and so he um, he kind of calls out to you and he says, well, uh, my name's Jer. Uh, I've been here a bit. Uh, I probably have some some information I might find helpful. Um, are you enemies of those cultists? You get thrown down here. Um, yes and no. Um, I'm humbled. Uh, that's Galileo. That's Donny Van. Um, and that's apparently everyone who's here. Um, the, uh, d did you get thrown down here? Hey, yep. By that beautiful fellow. Um, I guess oh, it made up. Right. Yes. Lareth is his name. Um, uh, I hail from Nob, where I live with my wife and, well, let's just say, um, I guess Lareth didn't like what I had to say when he first arrived in our little community. And uh, if I could rewind the clock, I'm not sure if I'd be so brave or so stupid. I guess two words mean the same thing. Um, actually, the brave sort of worked it out for you. Um, this stick uh, was Lareth's. Um, and I forget which one, but it might have been Donovan here that um, put up a bit of a clock to him. Um, so that's that's not a trouble you have no more. Um, well, I, I've been I've been replaying and playing through a lot of fantasies of me killing the bloke, but um, probably just as well that you did it. I um, he died in an embarrassing way. It just make you feel a little better. <laughs> well, that's good. I, and um, now you, so you killed the bloke, and then you find yourselves down here. Uh, how did that work? Um. Well, I would, pardon me, I would like to do Divine Sense. Uh, sure. Um, Divine Sense, does it give you any read on Celestials at all? Yes. Uh, it lets me, until the end of my next turn, I know the location of a Celestial Fiend or Undead within 60 feet that is not behind total cover. Okay. So I wouldn't say that he detects as Celestial to you, um, but... The Ren he at least okay. I'm gonna there's gonna be all sorts of comments on YouTube about messing, <laughs> messing with Greyhawk, but mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, that's how I'm kind of imagining uh, the Ren he are sort of they've got a little bit of celestial um heritage to them, and so you maybe get a little faint read of something on him, but not nothing that would make you think that he's an extra planar being or anything, just right that. That's his heritage. Or in in disguise, a fiend in disguise or anything like that. I mean, that, no, that was mainly what I was no fun, for. No funny business of that sort happening here. Very well. Um, how we got here? Um, well, a um, couple of weeks back, maybe a few months, um, I come across this little fella who was God-touched. Um, very proud of it. And didn't tell me that that was a communicable disease. So now I've been God touched a few times, and that's how I end up down here. God touched, you say? Well, that could either I, be a good uh, thing or a bad thing, depending on the God. Um, I sort of found it bad for both of them. Oh, I don't know you. what it means. Oh, wait, um, oh, there's the one. Well, where'd that come from? Who said that? Um, there's just three of you there. Oh, down here. Oh. Well, hello. I I was hiding. T I wasn't sure. Well, you you're good at that. You're the God touched one. Right. Mm hmm. Uh, I... your friend there seems to think it's um some sort of disease. Well, not quite. I haven't been gone so long that I would think that some kind of God touched pandemic has overtaken the world. You're, he's a little too tall to it for Brenda Barris to be interested. Oh. Brenda Barris, uh... 
I'm a, I'm a simple man from a podunk village. You'll have to forgive me. I, I'm not familiar with that one. Oh, that's okay. And Take it in mind. Find your way out of this place, huh? Have I found? No, I have not. I've been sort of wrapped up in the idea of surviving, and that's about all I've had time to devote myself to doing. Um, speaking of wrapped up, um, not not to pry overly much, but uh, your hands a bit bound weird. Um, um, we've come across a few folk who have a few things that are a bit weird under wraps. What um, what happened? Um, he sort of like kind of swings the thing around. He's like, well, um, I don't know. Uh, you, you don't might know. think it's a little bit silly. I- I'm a weaver by trade. Uh, when I first come down here, I invent this thing. It's got a little kind of glass thing on the inside. It's full of oil. And I wrapped up a, a, a bit of yarn here on the outside. I figure I could maybe light this thing and throw it at something. Maybe as a sort of weapon. I never really used it. I don't know if it works. It's sort of a silly thing. But I didn't have anything when I got thrown down here. All I had was a bit of yarn and some of my wife's candles. Oh, I, 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 don't worry. I'm a little bit more outfitted here. He kind of pulls out this sort of like bone looking dagger that it looks like he's like fashioned for himself. But I I don't know. It's just a little something from home. Um, Can you use this? And I pull out the uh, uh, morning star. Uh, I suppose I can use it insofar as I know which, where the handle is. Generally, you swing. Don't know that I'm any goods at it. I'll put it back on my on my belt. Have Have you uh, had any experience with those funny one eyed fish in this? water here well um i've seen them i've seen a lot of things that are sort of unnatural um i do my best to stay away from those things it looks like it may cause me some harm i come here to this little pond this is where i get my water and do a little fishing the, the fish generally in the center pond seem to be edible and for the most part not harmful I can't say that those eyeball fish have given me much much problem. Um, but there are other things. I'm, I, I see it's coming from the south there, and given the tremors in the water here, the waves, I guess you've seen our friend in the South Sea. And the big fella. Yeah. Oop. Uh, don't go down that way so much. Um, we I were say thinking stay... much the same. Away from, I'm just going to use like cardinal directions of your map to kind of describe things. But he he basically describes the northeast side of the node and says, "Yeah, a bunch of um, giants up there. Uh, they ain't too friendly. Uh, had a javelin or two thrown my direction. Um, don't much care for sharing the center pool much, so I try to stay out of there here. Oh, what else can I tell you?" Oh, there's a couple of um, half-elf ladies, women, says that they's from uh, some, some adventurers of some kind that uh, found their way here, exploring the temple. Um, they live up in like a northwestern side of the node. Um, friendly enough, I suppose, although a little odd. Um, they're often, I run into them from time to time, they're out collected and they say that they're from some kind of alchemist guild or something like that. And you're collecting cool. reagents. Where are they located, did you say? Uh, and he kind of points to kind of the north western side of the node. Um, if they're collecting, uh, have you seen them leave? Um... Like if there were four of them, and then there were the three of them, and they didn't say, "Oh, uh, Jennifer got eaten." Um, I've only seen two of them. 
போகும் சேம் டு uh yeah same too uh let's see now he seems like he kind of goes into his memory a little bit and he says what did they say their names were um cora cora and mala yeah wait well if you're friendly enough to know names then at least they aren't throwing javelins at you Hey, no, no. Um, um, has you noticed anyone who pops off for a bit? You know, leaves? Does uh, anybody come and go that you noticed? Leave the node? Um, Aye. You, I like, not d- not that ahead. I notice, but uh, I guess if, if I noticed such a thing, I'd probably be scrambling myself to... Do whatever they're doing to get on out of here. I, I don't know there's no way out. Um, well, that's fair. Uh, if we do find In fact, one, we'll tip you off to it. That's uh, those two adventuring types. That's what they say they're working on. Something about a potion of shifting planes or something of the sort. I don't really understand it. Once in a while, they send me out to keep keep an eye on things, see if I... They'll ask me if, like, have you seen this type of algae, or purple algae, or have you seen this such critter? And oh, I, I, I don't really go out of my way so much. I've never seen any of the things that they ask for. But they said they're looking for a way out, and if they finds it, they lets me know. Is there is there a place around here that that uh, if we had to, that we could uh, uh, rest for a for a long while without being dis- disturbed or attacked. Well, I've got a little camp myself that I've got set up. It's um, we got to cross over the ocean. I've got a little boat that I've kind of weaved together. Of... They need to have a boat. Oh, that's great. Well, yeah, he could probably maybe fit myself and two of you in it. Or he probably can't support too much weight. So if you want to be ferrying, he's kind of like looking at sort of heavily geared and such he says probably have to take a couple of trips if you want to ferry over all of your stuff but um uh, yeah i mean you're, you're happy to share um share my little spot it's it's worked out okay for me um when you say across the ocean he kind of points to the western side he says uh just over there uh kind of a high shelf that i've managed to rig up a little ladder, tie my boat off, and climb up there. It seems to keep me keep me out of uh, nibbling range. Um, is there any sort of way that you could, uh, you know, walk around the outside without the, the ocean bit, you know, especially the, the this bit, oh. where it goes like this? Because um, you said northwest was um, the two ladies, um, I... and we're sort of here. So if we go around them, we could pay, you know, pay them a visit. Is it all, you have to cross the water to go anywhere? Mm, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um. Oh. So like this shelf we're on, it just goes around the metal part then? Y- yep, that's right. Yep. Uh, oh. There's really only one of two places I ever go. It's either here or it's back to my little shelf. Um. I don't really know, you know, you're asking me about the half-elf friends of mine. Um, usually they come here to visit with me if they've got little things that they're looking for or whatever, or if they've got a little bit of extra food to share. Um, I presume they've got a little shelf like mine. Uh, there is one other resident, a uh, notable resident I didn't mention. Uh, uh Storm giant woman. Um, I never approached her myself, although I have observed her at times um, approaching them frost giants, and I get the sense they're not too friendly with one another. Uh, anytime that she... I don't understand the language or whatever, but I always get the sense that maybe she's trying to talk to them, and well, they treat her about the same way that they treat me. It's your spirit, yeah. Yeah. Um, d- 
Th those are a bit bigger giants than I was imagining. They're all they're all too big for me. Um, I but the um like the ogres. I thought he was just talking like more ogres. Those are like proper giants. Um, are are any of them in walking d distance? Well, sometimes the frost giants, like I say, will show up here. Uh, typically, kind of on the. You keep following this ridge, it'll eventually bend, and they're usually up there, so I kind of stick to this little part down here. Hey. Um, that seems wise. Do, do, do any of you speak giant? <clears throat> no. I speak common, which is the same thing to me. I don't... I, don't, um... I, I speak giant. Oh, that's right. You're, you're, um, oh yeah. Wait, like proper giant? Like giant giant? Like what probably them speak? I speak Druk, common, elvish, giant, armedial, and sylvan. Um, wow, you speak a lot. You're a polyglot. Um, do, do, do giants, uh, write things? Do they have a written language? Do you, you ever mess them up and speak the wrong one? Yeah. <laughs> right. I think I'd do that all the time. Um, but no, I was thinking, if if we wanted, we could leave a message uh, for the giants, aside from, you know, waiting here for them and, and throwing javelins, and then if they're wanting to talk, they could leave a message back. Um, which it would depend on any of... Go ahead. They don't seem very friendly, though. Um. Uh. uh true. Um. All the reception from the frost giants. It, it, um. I try uh, to speak to the to the, to the uh, uh, elvish ladies, or. I do speak a, a tiny bit to elvish. Um. But again, there's that. I really don't want to go on the ocean. <laughs> um, well, I guess we leave on this on this coral then. How long it's... does it take to get to his uh, his shelter? Oh, ten minutes. Ten minutes. So making two round trips wouldn't take too excessively long then. No, but. Like your friend, uh, I myself prefer not to be on the ocean if I can help it. Um, so, but you're going I, to go back there eventually anyway, right? True. I'm willing to go back there um, one time, take as many of you as I can. If you want to be ferrying your stuff, I'll let you lend. I'll lend you my boat and um, let you take on that risk. Don't, uh... Jer, oh. you've been uh, very helpful. I've got a question for you, and pardon me uh, for being this forward, but how does a weaver who has a family, a weaver from Nolb who has a family, end, who has run-ins with Larith, end up here? Well, I've been asking myself the same question for... I don't know how long it's been. Feels like it's probably been a few months. But, uh... When Larith first showed up in Nob, um... Just him, maybe half a dozen thugs that he hired. You know, we're, we're no stranger to uh, such thuggery in Nob, but uh, this was a little bit different. Uh... Seemed like he was uh, aiming to set up shop in our town and recruiting a lot of the young folk to join him, enticing them with riches and such. And one time, one day, I was down there with my pals at the Boathouse Tavern, and I just said enough. And I went straight up to him, and I told him what for, and told him to take a hike, take his goons, and get out of town. Felt good. It 
to... insight check. May I? Sure. Yeah. Give give a give a insight. Um, he's, uh, maybe, I don't know. There, there's, he's pretty matter of fact about it. Um, having a hard time getting a reading. He's telling you a story. He's not skipping a beat as he does so. Um, but then he just tells you, oh, I tell you, the only thing that's keeping me going, um, and not giving up is, I know the longer that I'm down here, the... The greater the chances that my wife will meet a more handsome, more successful version of me. I just can't have that. So, I need to survive and have some hope that I'm going to make my way back there. Seems like there was a little bit of a revenge fantasy I had cooking up in my head, but it seems like you're taking care of that. So, it's just the one thing left. I can't tell you exactly how it is I come to survive uh, there were others that Lareth come and throw down this way and they haven't been so lucky just barely making it making by well, the, the, the reason why I'd like to go over there and take a long rest is I can swap out you know uh, do a little swapping of my spells, uh, prepared spells, so that I can uh, get water breathing. And uh, oh. that may help us all out. Then. Uh, that'd be that'd be a skill to have, that's for certain. Hey, and it's just, the water goes, it just... Eh. Oh, um, yeah, Humble, you could wait here. Oh, I, I, was, I was hoping, um, at least for the first, and then maybe if you know, I, um, but giants. Well, it's my understanding. I don't, I don't think you want to wait here while I take a long rest. I am, um, I just, uh, am. It's my understanding, however, that storm giants might be able to be treated with. I'm not necessarily certain frost giants. They understand force. Um, I don't know that I'm going to be able to muster any level of force that's going to impress more than a one giant. Mm. Um, I'm I'm very proud of myself, but that seems excessive. Uh, so who wants to be in the boat first? Yeah. Well, well it seems boat? this place is fairly safe. I I I will volunteer to go with him. Uh, to make sure that the place that we're going is safe. Won't be able to bring the boat back. I'm, I don't think I can paddle it. Yeah, it does. There, he's got like one oar, you know, that little makeshift thing that it looks like he probably uses to kind of paddle either side. Uh, the boat can carry three individuals and 200 pounds of cargo on top of that. Basically, every trek will be a wandering encounter check. So each each direction back and forth. Um, so... And thus, this is his um, hesitancy. He knows how dangerous it is to be on the water. He doesn't want to be on it more than he has to, but he is willing to lend you his boat if you wish to. Do such a thing. Now, the other thing I would maybe check in on, um, you know, Galileo, you have wild shape and are able to take an aquatic form at this point, right? Uh, a creature with yes. a swim speed. I could, uh, I could uh, swim uh, while if the rest of you uh, uh, go in the boat. On Teasley, small, right? I um, so can you be something big enough that Teasley could ride you and we could all do this in one trip? I, I can be a reef shark. 
I don't know what that is. <laughs> it could be smaller. <laughs> I don't know what that I, means. I, I mean, it could be smaller. Like, I, it's not a play on words. I, I think it might be big enough to carry him. I think so. I don't want to go in the water, though. Because that's wet. Well, then then I can't help you. <laughs> How fast could a reef shark go? Could we, like, put you on the shield and have you skipping along behind? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not sure. I've never actually, you know... Uh, so I could... So in I wanted, game terms... I, I, can't I could it. cast reduce on myself and become tiny. Would I not? Would I count against the the boat passenger limit if I'm tiny? Um. No, oh, we'll say that that's a way to kind of get around that and then be in the boat. To so we could do it as one one trip if I'm tiny. Um. The the yes. The next question would just be, you know, we'll we'll take your encumbrance kind of out of the equation um that would be the encumbrance of the i'm assuming if galileo is going to turn into an aquatic thing he'll be fine but um it'll come down to what humboldt and donovan are carrying to be able to do this in one trip yeah um okay so i don't i guess i don't need all this oil um or i mean my one no, I'm keeping my one damp ration. Um, I guess a water flask is a bit much right now. Um, what else have I got? Um, I could maybe get down to a trim 100 pounds. Yeah, as I'm looking through my stuff... Um... I mean, everything else that I'm carrying is about 100 pounds other than my armor that I have on. Hi. Well, I, um, I could take some of the things before I shrink, and it would shrink with me. And as Humboldt's going through his stuff, he's like, What is in... Oh, um, I have 20 pounds of damp rations. Apparently, it wasn't one damp ration, it was ten damp rations. Um, no, that that's actually lightens the load quite a bit. Uh, yeah, but I, also, I also have ten days of rations as well. I can hold about 30 pounds more of stuff, and then could shrink, so it all, it all gets small with me. Oh, aye, then um, here, hold the rations. Um, and that's probably... I guess I don't really need the uh, decorative carrying case for my crossbow bolts anymore. I could just leave that behind. Yep, that gets me out under 100. No ra uh, handing you the rations, leaving the oil behind, and no water flask. So Humboldt is at, what was it, under 100? Under 100. And then uh, what is Donovan at? Uh, assuming we don't, do we take into account my armor? No? Yeah, my armor and yes. shield? Mm -hmm. That would be a part of it. Okay. Oh. Uh Then I would need to get, let's see, I'm at 100, well, I'm at 149, because my, uh, I've got this uh, belt of holding that uh, my holy water is in. Um, so I guess uh, a, a quick answer here would be a similar thing that Teasley has proposed, but for Galileo, because I think Galileo is going to have to shape shift as Galileo able to carry anything more before shape-shifting um yeah i'm not 
I'm not anywhere near my max. Um, so, so max I, minus your I, current, what do you have freedom vote for? Um, more than 100. Okay. So I think you've got an answer here. With uh, Teasley's spell in your shapeshift, you're going to be able to do this in one trip. Yeah. So through a little math problem or, in here. I didn't think of this. I could make the boat bigger. I could have cast enlarge on the boat and then nobody has to go in the water. We don't have any of it because the whole thing gets a whole size category bigger. Um, that does seem like a better idea. But we've only got one ore. <laughs> right. Mm. Yeah. Um... Well, what's the speed of the boat anyway? Uh, about we'll one oar feet. speed. My uh, as a reef shark, I can go forty feet, so I could probably help pull you along. I think we go with the original plan. <laughs> I think All that right. works. Original plan will work. Um, let's see here. So one wandering monster check. Mm. Oh, do we want high numbers or low numbers? What high? He numbers? said low numbers, but he had to check the chart. Oh dear! Yes. <laughs> Let's take a look. See here. We'll have a wandering encounter while I'm tiny. Teeny Teasley. I will be right back, Alex. Okay. Um, let's do this. Let's uh, let's just take a short break here. Uh, five ten minute break. Uh, and then when we come back, we will find out what the Wandering Encounter is all about. So, uh, thanks everyone who's hanging out with us. We will be back shortly. Hey everybody, thanks for bearing with us. Uh, we took a, just a short break here, uh, pretty much smack dab in the middle of our session. Um, our crew here um, just met uh, someone who uh, says they're from Nulb, uh, an apparent uh, sacrifice uh, to the forces of Larith and the temple, um, sort of a, uh, probably unexpected survivor, a uh, simple weaver from the village of Nulb seems to have, uh, brandished some makeshift weapons as a little bit of a, used his craft as a weaver to weave together some, uh, padded armor for himself and has been eking out a meager, uh, survival um here in the water node and gave the party here a little bit of a rundown of some of the maybe notable residents of the water node and um says that he's got uh, a place where he's got a camp and players asked if he'd be willing to uh let him stay with them he says sure um but just has this sort of like pretty makeshift kind of woven together reed boat that he a uh, little more than a canoe. And so uh, with a little bit of uh, Teasley's magic to uh, reduce uh, Teasley and Galileo has turned himself into a reef shark. Uh, you figured out kind of a plan to make this in one trip. Um, and so Jer is, is more than happy to take the lead and kind of rowing the boat as you start to uh, kind of head off into um, the salty sea water of the perimeter of the node. And as you're uh, making your way out, kind of as you get to maybe like this area here, um, you're still seeing kind of the choppiness of the water um, coming from the south. Uh, likely more um, activity from the dragon turtle that you'd spotted earlier that uh, seemed like maybe he was feeding or doing something down in the south. Um, and so you still got a little bit of that happening. Um, it seems like Jer is pretty uh, adamant about kind of sticking close to little um, landmarks like this uh, to try not to get into the thick of the sea. And so as he does so, he starts to navigate around another one of these big kind of rocky outcroppings uh, from the water. Rises up to a point, maybe about 60 feet up or so. And so as he's kind of navigating around that, um, there is sort of a thud in the canoe itself. Um, and you all notice it right away. There's this like sort of this big, it just 
like something dropped into um, the canoe and you see it's a sort of this or amorphous blob and it starts to kind of you know, peel away at itself and kind of create a little bit of a pseudopod um, that lashes out and goes for Humboldt. Uh, so it's going to make one bad thing. And nice. I've got that one DM reroll. I'm really willing to cash it in here. Uh, see if we can make something happen there. So what, maybe the first pseudopod kind of whiffs it, but then a second one sprouts out from its back and then tries to give a second swat. Um, a 16 miss will miss and just hits the side of your half plate. Um, and then we're going to roll initiative. It's pretty tight inside the canoe. And so as this thing sort of like spreads out, it's sort of oozing right underneath your feet and your boots and such. All right, uh, Galileo, do you want me to hit your initiative for you? Uh, sure. All right, so Humboldt, you've got the right uh, to respond to that here, top of the order. Uh, Humboldt is going to take his fancy new stick and swing it at this thing. Um, where are you at? There you are. Uh, he will attack recklessly, but not raging yet. Uh, That'll hit. 23. You give it a big wallop. And, uh, uh, magical big... bludgeoning. Magical bludgeoning. A uh, big Magical chunk bludgeoning. of it just kind of like splits off of itself and goes flying and drops somewhere off into the ocean. And you can see its form is a little bit uh, diminished. Um, uh, it's not good because I can keep hitting it. And he'll keep hitting it. Um, attack number two, advantage. That'll 23. hit. Damage. Fine. And All then right. bonus action, he'll hit it with the other end of the stick. Bad. That'll hit. All right. And then that. Whap, whap, whap. He has uh, big blobs of this thing are kind of... Uh, uh, detaching or being removed from the main form they just sort of like start to kind of blacken and sort of wither um as they're not connected to like the main life force of the ooze organism um that's going to bring us uh teasley what are you up to i want to th throw a, a really little firebolt at it all right that'll hit Nine points of fire damage. All right. It is not looking too good as the fire just kind of burns and sort of dissolves away some of the, the substance of the thing. And then for my bonus action, I'm going to convert two sorcery points into a spell slot. All right. That will bring us to Donovan. Oh, mute. Thank you. Uh, I will attack it twice with my longsword. Uh, swing and a miss. That'll hit. Oh, that hits? Sure does. And uh, does does the exhaustion give me any 
like disadvantage. Uh, first level is the first level is just ability checks. Okay. So uh, nothing here. You manage to slash into the thing, and as you do, it cuts <clears> it in two, and the thing like starts to kind of fly into the air, and you can see it split into two jellies that maybe want to reach out and try to attack at you, but um, you've done enough damage with your sword that um, they both just kind of fly off into the distance and sort of dissolve and break apart. Um, mm. However, as this little tiny uh, thank you, Percy, for the DM reroll, um, tried to make something happen with your first one there. Um, as, uh, as this very short combat uh, ends, you're seeing that this encounter uh, has already done the damage that it needed to do to put a little bit of stress on you all as little s leaks there's water that's starting to pool into the bottom of this um makeshift canoe uh -huh. um the acidic and nature of that creature had burned holes into it oh um I'll do the Orin. You start to weave in, okay? And uh, he's like, "Start to weave in." <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, 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 I don't have anything for which to. Uh, um, uh, I do you have buckets, me. and he starts like pouring <laughs> some of his fresh water that he packed up with him, and then he starts handing out buckets to uh, the, those of you that are inside. Um. So te Teasley, what you're teeny tiny? I'm a I'm about four inches tall right now. Yeah, so. you fit inside the bucket. But, uh, <laughs> start drinking. <laughs> um, so I'll go one by one and kind of see what each of you is doing, and uh, we'll resolve this with. We'll just see. We'll see what that kind of the collective. <laughs> what, what do you put together here? So why don't we start with Humboldt? Uh, I think Humboldt's just like, I'll do the or because I don't understand how this is supposed to work otherwise. Okay. And he's just like, probably completely doing it wrong, but just like down and push and you can feel the whole boat go one way and then down, push on the other whole kind of arcs. Like he hasn't got the canoeing thing going. So it's just whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. In comparison to Jair, uh, you're certainly probably the more athletic of the two. And so this might be a little bit of a benefit. So if you want to give me... Uh, strength athletics check. Um, sure. Uh, borrow a reroll, guys. Go, Go for, for it. it. All right. Twenty four. That one is looking good. That's going to be one success. So, yes, the uh, boat starts to kind of propel forward at a faster clip than you had been going. Um, Jer uh, himself, he's going to just grab a bucket and start kind of using it to sort of try to siphon off some of the water and uh, keep you clear a bit. Um, Donovan, any special action that you would like to take? The only thing I have to hold water is my boots. So I will take my boots off and... Use, use my boot as a bucket and start bailing. Sounds good. Um, I'm going to say this is maybe sort of like a quickness thing. Uh, so if you want to give me an acrobatics check, now it's going to be a disadvantage because of the exhaustion, but um, maybe you can make something happen here. Oh, that was almost a 15 and a 19. Um, a 9. So, first of all, it's a boot. It's not like the greatest receptacle for all this liquid, and you're just kind of sluggish and tired. It's spilling out while still in the boat. It's just not not quite there. Uh, so we're going to call that one a failure. So we got one success, one failure. Um, Teasley, uh, what? anything that Teasley's up to? Um, I think that um, I am going to um, use my sorcery points to twin spell another enlarge reduce 
So as soon as I do, mine mine drops, and I overweight the boat a little bit. But then I'm going to reduce myself again while making the bucket bigger. Okay. So so it can bail more water. Okay. Um, we'll we'll call that a success. Uh, you know, Jer's uh, bucket a little bit bigger. Um, is just able to make up for the water that Donovan is not uh, putting in. So we'll call that a success there. And then uh, Galileo, anything that Galileo is doing? Uh, Galileo swims under the boat and pushes up to try and hold it up from sinking lower and and swims forward to try and, you know, uh, propel it forward a little bit faster than what they're rowing. Okay. Um, what do you think? Strength athletics check on that? As the shark? Uh, yeah, he's got a better strength athletic ability than I do. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, now I got a plus two on that, so it would actually be 17. Okay, so three successes. I was looking for three successes, and so together with all of these things are enough to mitigate um, the, the peril of the boat uh, flooding and you all sinking to the bottom. Um, so uh, you manage to get the boat to where it needs to be, which is right over... Uh, here, where um, just as Jer kind of described, there's a rocky outcropping, uh, this massive shelf that is uh, um, maybe like 20 feet up or so. Um, you can see he's got some like kind of rigging that he has down at the sea level to kind of tie up his boat. And then there's sort of a rope ladder um, mm -hmm. that he has made that he uses to climb up and down. So um, easy enough for um, um, you all to kind of jump onto the ladder. Uh, Galileo, are you going to drop your shapeshift uh, or your wild shape to head up there? I'll uh, I'll let him tie up the boat or 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 try and pull the boat up so it doesn't sink, uh, and then and then I will uh, shapeshift and climb up the ladder. Sounds good. Um, yeah, so you're all able to make your way up there. Um, he, Jair says that obviously the boat is in disrepair. You're going to maybe need some of you to kind of help to shimmy it up so that he can like kind of work at it. You can kind of see there's a little campsite here. Um, there's uh, something that uh, sort of looks like a fire pit, a uh, little hammock towards the back. Uh, that he's tightened into uh, the rock wall. Um, and then just kind of like, it, it almost looks like like he's just sort of been collecting trash. There's sort of debris that looks like, like kind of driftwood and like parts of ship wreck material and little random strands of like rope and things like that. Just, just junk that he's collected um, apparently um, from the, from the water. Um, that he's collected and he's dried off uh, pieces of it and has been kind of using that as like firewood and such. And so he gets a fire going. He's got um, some fish that he's collected. He'll kind of make a little bit of a dinner for you all. And I will drop the enlarge reduce and give Humboldt back his rations. Oh, um, I, uh, we should, uh, they should probably be eaten fairly soon. I don't think they hold up much after they've been completely underwater. I'll give back whatever uh, people gave me to carry while they were in the boat. I am... Huh. That was almost as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, well, it wasn't the up and down part that was bad. Oh, it was. Well, there were worse things. No. Have you ever seen uh, those globules of whatever that was that uh, fell on the boat before, Jer? Um. Well, no, that that was a new one for me. 
I uh, usually like to stay close to the, the outcroppings. Uh, less of a chance of that big dragon turtle cause kind of coming up and grabbing me by surprise. But uh, good to know that even my fail-safe plans are not so fail-safe. Hey, that's a bit of that's a bit of bad news then. Hey, hey. Um. So, uh, comparing how far we had to go from there to here, um, how far would you say it is from here to where, um, uh, them half elven women hang about? Like yeah. shorter, right? Just like a couple of minutes. I don't rightly know. Um. I haven't been up in their quadrant so much. Um, cool. They usually come down to see me over there on the reef. But, um, yeah, I, I have no reason to believe it is much further. Um, I sort of have a theory that this whole place is sort of, sort of equidistant from the center. But I have nothing to really verify that with, uh, as I haven't been to the, the south Hey, or the north um, so uh, uh, we'll definitely help you with the boat. Um, um, so, uh, do you think we go back to the middle bit and make a bit of smoke and fuss and see if folks come to us, or do we go? Um, I'm thinking north uh, to speak with the half half elven women. Um. Or otherwise. What would the upside of the fuss be making if folks came to us? So I'm do we think it's good if they come to us? Um only so much though as if they're coming to us, we're not walking into like their defenses or traps or right. other such. Um We would need to be careful how many we brought to us at one time though. That's the question. I don't know that we can control that. So, like, I don't want to call a bunch of frost giants to come and check us out. Um, so, so um, the, you know, if we rest here and we get the um, water breathing spell that I can give to everyone, um, if we get in trouble um, with the Giants, we we can always go under the water to escape them. To the dragon turtle. I um I feel like that has a natural ability of humble eating. So, <laughs> uh, prefer. Yeah, like, you're really crunchy in your armor. Um, I, I mean, Ultimately, we may have to go under the water to. Oh no! I, I I I would like to be able to breathe under the water. That was unpleasant. Um, not being able to, uh, but still, um, then you should, uh, uh, turn into a shark. Then uh, it it's really uh, it it's really worked out well. I um, well, I'll human, work on that. human can't do that sort of thing. Um, so I can only get big and little and invisible. Again, human can't do that sort of thing. Um, but uh, so uh, a bit of a rest. Fix up the boat, and um, leave anything we don't particularly need here, um, and then north uh, to talk to the half elven woman. Seems like as much a plan as any. Hey, okay. um, and uh, not to um about the. The gem? Um, I haven't heard any mention of, like, a gem. There's, like, uh... Yeah. I, yeah, I... Um, have you seen a, a gem? Sort of roundy shape, I think? Oh, let me just take a look. And he kind of looks at his trash <laughs> pile. No, I haven't found a gem. <laughs> I, I I was sort of figuring had just had there been like a gem floating about, you would have mentioned oh. it. Yeah. Um, uh, but it, we're sort of. Like, I got dollars to donuts that that gem is with that dragon turtle. I'm not particularly happy to hear that. Well, I don't have anything to back that up. It's just a theory. 
Or it could be just kind of nodding, and he's like, uh, yeah, if, um, if I were looking for something like that, um, I imagine it's probably down there with, uh, that big yeah. dragon turtle does seem like he's defending something. Maybe it's just eggs, but, uh, uh hmm? yeah. Well, when, when you're talking about dragon turtle, dragons love to have treasure hoards, so maybe he's... Maybe he's the same way. Hi, um, right. Donovan, so have you got some big any... fish to fry? Anything to save my sanity here? I would have to agree that the best bet is more than likely if if the gem was put here and is protected. In all but... likelihood, the best protection would be. In a, uh, you know, this uh, large turtle's horde. I mean, that was obviously the biggest creature that, wow, well, that I've ever seen. Um, I might talk to those women first because they, they've been collecting stuff. So they, you know, in their searches and, and that, they, they may even have it. You never know. I'm really excited that maybe I could go steal it. Oh, that's such a bad idea. But I'm also really scared, and I don't think I can do it without going in the water. I am Taisley. I have something... Stay on some friendly terms. I am something very important that we need to review. If you should happen to get into the dragon turtle's nest... And by some stretch of fortune, you see eggs. You are to come back and tell us about the eggs without bringing one with you. Because you have a habit of going away and coming back with eggs of things that are very angry. Right, so that sounded like one of those times where Humboldt's telling me not to do a thing that I want to do. So I stopped listening for a while there. But, um, you know, the dragon turtles' eggs uh, are probably bigger than you, anyway. No, no, only no. until I make them small. I, 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 I've seen him do that, and that's what's scaring me. Um, because he's gonna come back. A, that would be a good caper. I could do that. Or, or we don't that do that. Be, that would be exciting, wouldn't it? No. Can, can you make the dragon turtle small? Maybe. <laughs> now that would that I, I'm okay with that. If we could make the dragon turtle a little bit more manageable. Now, when I've tried to do it to people that don't want me to do it to them, sometimes it doesn't work because they're like strong-willed. My guess is the dragon turtle might be what you'd call strong-willed. I am so. Plan one: we go up and talk to the half-elven women. And um, while you do that, I sneak in and steal the gem. No, we all go and we talk to the half-elven women. Because they may right, know the you way... you all go and talk to them while I steal the gem. Teasley, I will hold the tail. I will pull you along. I thought it was a good idea. We could make this a short trip. Aye. Let's find out if they actually have it first. I, well, um, uh, along with the gem... We need to know a way out. Remember, out, which the half elven right. women um, have a potion or some sort of thing that they're thinking about. Um, so, okay. so we talk to them, and that way we don't end up running round and round and round on that coral bit with a dragon turtle chasing us. And if they're looking for a way out, we may be able to help them, and they'll help us then. Um, so, I'm thinking of us. Um, maybe Donovan has the most honest face. Is that so? Um, I'm thinking of the, of us. Donovan likely has the most honest face. <laughs> You're probably right. Really good at making people think my face is honest. I am... Um, uh, Who's more uh, charismatic here? Um, <laughs> Not me. Um, I'm just saying. 
So uh, if we if we're go if we're gonna go say hello to this these half elven women, um, don't even. I should are turn you, on like, the charm. No, um, especially not on that dress. I like this dress. It's nice. It sh it sparkles. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> Maybe you could offer it to them. Uh, uh Well, I can only like. make it big enough for them for a little bit. Speaking of offers, this is something that I was thinking of. What do we have on us that would be something that would be very difficult to find here? It would have a lot more value to somebody cordoned off in some place like this. You're looking at my dress again, aren't you? <laughs> yes. You're not trade That's my correct. dress away. <laughs> uh, aside from... Um, an astonishing amount of irony. Uh, I'm about out of everything except for those rations. Um, if you count irony, I have a fortune in gems in my pocket. Um, but <laughs> and uh, several pounds of gold. I have uh, two rings of value and one crown. I don't can't remember where I got them, but. All this talk of eggs, I was hoping one of you might have some with you. Oh, I do miss breakfast. Not yet. <laughs> um, uh, uh, you can help yourself to the Marashans. Uh, they're effectively scrapple at this point. I've got nine of those rations, too. Um, so, uh, the oil um, might be in short supply if they ain't got whales. Um, holy water? Yeah, I've got holy water. Um, I was sort of traveling light as I was thinking we were going to fight and then leave. It wasn't till the gods showed up and were like, Go not do that. Um, Wait, well, what, you can't argue with a god, can you? I have, and I can, and I will. You can't successfully argue with a god, can you? Um, I plan on trying until they give up. I have a statue of a demon woman. It's made out of ivory. What? What? I have a statue of a demon woman that's made out of ivory. Um, I don't know Galileo, where I got that either. Why? Why do you have a statue of a demon woman? I don't woman? know. I picked up along the way someplace. I don't, know. don't ask questions. I would have taken something like that for sure. It. Now that I told you, you'll probably try and take it from me. No, no, I don't. I won't steal from you because you're not rich. Um, that dragon turtle might be rich, though. So, uh, 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 Jail, it we're saying um, that the half elven women um, want things fetched, like uh, algae and um, other such things. So, even if we don't happen to have something valuable now, um, we could go places that they ain't willing to go and get them. Um, so, uh, maybe they want um, squished jelly, of which we have some. Jerry, you said that they put you out after some algae. Do you know where this algae is located? Maybe we could take some to him as a offering. He kind of points to the east and says, on the other side of the lake there, um, they described to me there was a sort of a, a shallow... It was some, something like this outcropping of rock, and that there's a, sort of a crescent-shaped uh, outcropping like that, where there's a, a pretty flat, shallow uh, uh, bay, I guess. Uh, maybe, I don't know what the right terminology would be, but it sort of grows in there. Um, um, I, like I haven't the been word. over there, so I haven't seen it, but um, you know, most of this, he kind of points out the ocean. I guess... 
maybe 50 feet deep or so. Um, and so this place that they are describing maybe about maybe similar to the center lake. Well, if you haven't over, gotten any... over on the east side by the frost giants. Yeah, uh, closer over there, and thus uh, I'm a little deterred to make my way over there myself. Right. Um. So, um, Donovan, um, yes. do we <clears throat> go and visit the half elven women and make a deal ahead of time, or do we go and fetch some um algae? Uh, and show up with it as like a um, gift. What if they don't need it anymore? Um, then we have got a lot of algae that they don't need. Or we go I visit them. I think we first. talk to them first. They might be looking for something else. Right. Or we go and rob the dragon turtle. Uh, and by we, I mean me. Again. It would be so, it would be such a good story. You know, you can tell stories that you haven't done. I do! I, I know! So, I don't know why you're so dead set on this one. Because um, it's even better if you did it. I, I, I'd know all the details to leave in the story. Well, um, still... And I'd know which ones to embellish. Um, so, so, the half-elven women first find out about the algae. That's that. Try and dodge the giants. If we end up needing the giants, Galileo can talk to the giants. Um, and we do this all in a rickety woven boat. Don't talk to the nice giant. I don't know that the frost giants not liking her makes her a nice giant. Um, oh, that in my head, that's she's nice now. The words. I actually agree with Teasley on this. The word storm. Is in her giant's name. Right. No, I don't have anything clever for that. No, you're she's, right. She's powerful. She's probably okay. There's lots of things that are powerful that aren't storms. Storms are not a good thing. No one's ever like, oh, it's a nice storm outside. No, I no, no. I say this if I'm all cozy, her, she's a storm. She's a very calm storm. She is if sort of I'm all cozy nice by a fire, a storm can be nice. Jer, when you uh, when you treated with the half elven women, they asked you to get this algae. You haven't gotten any and taken it to them, correct? What did they offer you in return for this? Well, they're making a potion that might be able to get us out of here. Okay, so they were offering you a way out if you brought them the algae with the potion that they were making. Yeah, um, it wasn't exactly like a, you know, tit for tat kind of thing. Um, they more or less asked me, keep an eye out uh, if he's happened to find these things, bring them to me or bring them to them. Um, so, but it seemed like they were. Uh, Willing to share, uh, willing to help out uh, if they found the answer. If Jer would come with us, I would say we get the algae first. It's already been asked for, and they have not received any. Once they went and got it in the meantime. Well, that is true. Uh, though, wait. Uh, that seems like another full boat situation. <clears throat> And Jair says, I want to get out of here, but I also want to be alive to get out of here. Right, that's a sticky wicket then. Could, what would it take to make, could we make another oar? Because if we had two oars, maybe we could move a bit faster in the boat. We could probably fashion something for you. Uh, if speed is something you're looking for, yes. Um, or maybe we... What would it take to make a bigger boat? He's just kind of looking around at the things that he's collected. I don't... I think it would take probably proper tools and... More right, supplies so that's than out. I have stockpiled here. Well, I have... have a, what? I have a crowbar and a hammer. 
Um, that might help some. Well, uh, so after you get the wrist, you said you can make us water breathing. Uh, yes, I, I can. Well, I, I can... I'm thinking um, if uh, once we got that and we start heading out, um, if we see anything, you know, uh, sunk that we're wanting, we can just go and fetch it. Um, so we might be able to find oh, some things. We'd get all wet. Um, I but we'd be able to breathe the water, so the wetness wouldn't. I mean, I'm still soaking wet right now. Oh, I know it's the worst. This dri- I've got to dry my dress again. So um, so if we, if we if we sleep, and then we take our rickety boat, and we see like a sunken boat, then we could um go get the sunken boat, um, or at least the wood. And then make be make something not um, seaweed. You no fish, it's, it's, it's a it's a that's the best boat we've got. I um is the best it's the best boat I've seen here. Um, it's the only boat. Jer, considering that we are all soaking wet, or at least the four of us are, um, is there does like night fall here? Does it get colder? Um, well, uh, nightfall, no, it, it always stays like this, this sort of light, uh, that permeates down, stays pretty constant. Um, there are some temperature changes and such that I've experienced, uh, pretty calm right now, but occasionally there is like a wind or a breeze that'll come through here. And, um, when it comes from the breeze, it seems to originate from the north east seems to be a chill air air that seems to blow up from the southern end of the node uh always feels a bit warmer to me and so that does fluctuate and change from time to time that would make sense the frost giants live to the northeast then wait if it's from the southeast then it's all stormy um Oy. I haven't As... truly experienced any um, weather quite like that or anything pr- coming from the storm giant, so uh, she has control over the weather. I somewhat doubt that she's exerting it. Um. I'm going to shimmy out of my wet dress. Yeah, so I... Uh... He gets a fire going, and so there's a place to kind of warm yourselves, and um, you know you can hang up some of the the damp clothing and whatnot to try to get it to dry off a bit. Yeah, I'll get out of my armor and everything. I'm gonna, I can't sleep in it, so, and I'm beat. Yeah, he uh, he he prepares some some food, some fish and whatnot that he's caught throughout the day, and offers that to you. Um, you're gonna be able to take the a long rest here, um, so that objective is complete. Uh, Donovan, your exhaustion will go away at this point. Um, anything that anybody wants to do during the long rest? Uh, I'm gonna switch out that one spell, but. Okay. That's about yep. it. Sounds good. So, Just uh, think about how I'm going to rob the dragon turtle. Even <laughs> of dragon turtle loot um, and or eggs. Humble uh, to practice the Shakespeare. Sounds good. Um, I think if you got that out, like Jer may come and ask you about it at some point. He'll say, uh, Yellow skull. I... Well, uh, it's gold, actually. Ba-ding! Gold, oh. Um... Hi. Um, I, I don't know if you overheard, but a fair bit of irony um, runs in my blood. Um, I... But uh, I, uh, Cuthbert, um, you know, the saint fella, says uh, we ought to take this and go deal with it. Um, I... So, stay away from Teasley. God touched is contagious. Huh. What have you fellas gotten yourselves into? This seems like... You know, I got thrown down here, but you all 
came willingly at the bequest of a god? <laughs> Some company you keep. Um, it's Meanwhile, Teasley's got just his boots on and is drying his butt on the fire. God touched. Mm -hmm. hmm. Uh-huh. St. Cuthbert I... is my lord. If he tells me to come down here, I, uh, that is what I do. Mm -hmm. hey, I... Uh, you get too close to Teasley. You end up hanging out with folk like Donovan. God's showing up. You get choke slammed by yours. <laughs> but you take it. You have a great story later. I had a great story. Oh, a this story's just story. getting better all the time. And worse, but better. Alex, uh... As I take a long rest, could you import uh, your uh, from? Yeah, you I don't right? seem to be all set right now. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okie dokie, should be coming in. Um. So, uh, you take a long rest, and, um, yeah, what do you want to do then as you get up? Uh, Jer will, uh, again, um, make a bit of breakfast for you before you head out, so you're good and ready. Oh, it didn't seem to, didn't seem to bring in... Okay, That's no big that. deal. We're we're not really doing all that much in Foundry at this point anyway, oh. so if you just want to track your stuff right in D&D &D Beyond, that's totally fine with me. I'm more or less, at this point, just using it for the initiative tracker in the map. So, has there been a decision whether we go for the algae first or go uh, speak with these two uh, half-elven late sisters? Um, I were thinking the alchemists first as they're north, and that seems like less ocean. Because the algae seems like it's going to be ocean, lake, lake, ocean, algae. Um, and I like just ocean um, alchemists. Less chance of meeting giants on the way, too. Hey, um... So, uh, um, we need to fix the boat as well, I believe. Do what we can to assist with that. Okay, is the the plan is to take the boat north? Is that what it is? Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, so then, like, probably the better part of the morning here is going to be spent repairing that. Um, pretty minor types of things, just things that you didn't have time to really deal with out as it was happening but now that it's up here um he's able to use a bit of the rope to kind of reinforce uh, where the gaps were and such and, and get that back into working order for you um so then uh th three of you uh would be able to he'll give you the boat he is not inclined to go with you he is five hit point commoner guy like he's <laughs> okay. totally not an adventurer right. um he, it's a minor miracle that he is still alive. Um, so he's willing to give you the boat and whatnot, even though that's his livelihood, because he thinks that, all right, you guys hang with gods and such. Maybe you can find a way for him to get out of here. So he's willing to right. take that risk, uh, give you the boat. So um, three of you can fit in the boat. And then it's sort of a, you got a couple of ways to deal with that odd person out. Um, I'll do the Orin, but I can't get small or turn into a shirk. Well, then we've got an extra ore now, so we'll go a little faster. I, um, so, um, do, do, you, uh, do you want to be a shark, Galileo? Or, Teasley, do you want to be small? Or, um, Oh, or we could just hang a rope off the back and one of you could drag a lion in the water and just breathe the water. That sounds terrible. <laughs> Who knows what we'll catch. <laughs> Trolling. Um, I'll, I I'll be a shark. Okay. Sounds good. I'll... I think like the weight thing, we could just sort of assume that 
you've got you're probably carrying at this point like plenty of stuff that you really don't need that you could keep with Jer. Um, at this point, we can just assume that you're going to do that for some of those mm-hmm. non-essentials. Um, uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, you had a question, Chris? No. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Okay, so at this point, you get into the boat. Uh, Galileo, you turn into the shark, and you start heading due uh, north. Uh let me know if I'm mischaracterizing kind of the way uh, that you want to make your way up there. But um, right now it's basically like water on all sides of you as you're heading north. Uh, I see a little outcropping of rock there uh, to your left. Um, plan to continue straight. Is there a way to... So when we first landed, it was keeping track of what we'd seen. Is there a way to make it still do that so we have an idea of where things are in relation to each other? Oh, is it not doing that? It's it's not. I I mean, and if you don't want it to, that's fine. But no, I would want it to. Um, I'll have to probably futz to figure out how to make that happen. But okay, it seems unlikely but, we're finishing the session here tonight. So, but we um, but we we, we do have some time. concept of where we've been. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, one Absolutely. question that I do have: um, the person who uh, Galileo. You can you cast water breathing from shark form? No. Okay. But you could cast it beforehand because it lasts for twenty four hours. Oh, does it last for twenty four hours? And it's not concentration. Okay. Oh, if that... do you plan on going into the water? Or... We don't know. It would be better to have it on and not need it than need it and not have it on. Um, I can do that, um, if that's what you want. Yeah. I didn't know it lasted 24 hours, I guess. So, so and one casting, can that get everybody? I think 10. it gets up to eight. It's at 10. I thought it was eight, but either way, yeah, plenty of people. Plenty of people. Yeah. Ten willing people or ten willing creatures. All right. So you expend the spell slot and cast water breathing as a preparatory thing before you head out. Um, awesome. Cool. So, uh, from this point right here, uh, is the plan to keep heading north, or is there a different direction that you'd like to go? I think north is all we know. Yeah. All right. I suppose we could try to follow uh, Jer's example and and go from outcropping to outcropping. At some point, and, like when you get right here, you no longer see any any outcropping uh, exactly. Um, continue north from this point. I think so. Yeah. And you see Humble a to like bit there. Slap the water and try and get uh, uh, Galileo's attention, and just sort of like do a. Eh, um. Can Can you understand me? No. Yes. Do sharks have ears? Um. Do you see anything? Do do, do you? <laughs> um. Oh, this is worse than the dwarf. I um, like Galileo because he probably knows what you're saying. He's choosing not to respond. Oh, that's <laughs> oh oh. He's um, showing all his shark teeth. He's smiling. <laughs> no, 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 not that. Um. No, do, Are you sure that's still Galileo, or is it a different shark? Do sharks do that? I think they always look like that. I've only I seen them in pictures. The ocean so much. Um, so just more and more. Just this, this way. Okay, we um, just keep rowing the boat. Sharks are happy. Keep rowing. Okay. A little shark fin circling the boat. That. Oh, which? Wait. Which way was no? That. Um. What? Why? So any any actions that are happening during that uh, discourse other than continuing north? Okay. 
I wasn't uh, sure I'm just if keeping... Galileo was doing a perception check or trying to do something, or if he's just troll on you. I am just keeping an eye on the uh, on the water. Okay, uh, water for the most part seems pretty calm up here. Um, the choppiness of whatever the dragon turtle was doing back there, you're not really getting that up here. Um, I guess and Galileo would be the only one who would know this, but uh, yeah, temperature of the water is probably getting cooler the further you drift north. But not um, ice cold or anything. He said we like uh, it were it were ten minutes that way, and everything's about equidistant, um, which I think he means means ten minutes this way, and we should be there. Um, so Ooh. if we go twenty minutes this way. Something's gone terribly wrong. I... Yeah, it hasn't been that significant of time quite yet. Um, let's see. Here we go. North a bit more. Um, probably right here, you start to see a little bit of what looks like um, an outcropping of rock not quite as high as the one that Jair is using as a respite point, maybe about five feet above the water line. Um. Um, Donovan, I'm thinking maybe now's the time to do the announcing bit. Announce our presence? Um, well, either we do it while we're in the water or we try and explain ourselves once we're on their land. Um, Alright. Um, yeah. I will move to the front of the boat, and uh, in my loudest uh, oratory, give a holler out. Uh, Hello! That's it. Is there anybody there? give a call out um, maybe a little bit of a echo that comes back at you uh, maybe kind of suggesting there might be a kind of like a rocky wall or something up ahead somewhere and it's very distant kind of echo um, but uh, that being said um, there is no like immediate reply or anybody that reveals themselves um, but we are like a hundred feet away it looks like so maybe we should move a little bit closer see oh, if we um, see any movement oi no problem and um, start rolling D donovan aren't, aren't you supposed to be like i'm donovan of this place of that place and all sorts of nice isn't that what you do sometimes sometimes um, i tend to put the charms on when uh when i know that there's somebody there because I was just thinking, like, I could have done that. I... Oi. Hello? Um, what are passive perceptions? No, Eleven. No 11. Uh, mine is bad enough that I don't know what a passive perception is either. Uh, Twelve. Uh, I think I'm twelve as well. Uh, Galileo, you're under the water. About how far down? Um, I I don't think I'm going. I'm I'm keeping an eye on the boat, so I'm not I'm not going to be diving real deep. So I'll I'll say maybe I'm fifteen twenty feet down. Okay. The group moves ahead just a little bit. Uh, get closer to that shoreline. I'm going to say as you get here, um, pretty soon, like as you get close to maybe like, we'll say 30 feet from the shoreline there, um, Galileo, you see uh, three large forms kind of um, swimming. Uh, probably Maybe a little bit deep, maybe about 30 feet underneath the surface. 
Um, they've got um, these sort of harpoons in hand. They're kind of amphibious fish-like creatures uh, with long blue tails, tentacles at their mouth. Um, and they all uh, take aim at the boat and shoot up at it. The harpoons, dunk, dunk, dunk. And those of you in the boat, once again, feel kind of the sensation of water filling into the boat. But this time, these are bigger, more substantial um, holes that have ripped through the fibers of the, the woven boat. And, um, yeah, you are going to find yourself in a conflict here with three marrow. We're just running this theater of the mind style. Um, so go ahead and roll initiative, and I'll try to get these on the track and we'll get going on this one. Uh, turn tracker is not yet reset oh, I for have me. And combat. Uh, of course, that would happen. Okay. <laughs> there, I got you all back on there. And let's see, just need one more. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. So we begin combat. Uh, harpoons shoot up and pierce through the boat. Uh, we got a marrow at the top of the tracker. Um, and it is, um, I want to say it uses its action to pull down at the boat and so it begins to submerge it submerges itself 20 feet down um and so those of you in the boat you can i'm gonna say you can either uh choose to swim uh start swimming at this point or you know be carried down with the boat I guess I'll start with Humboldt. Which are you kind of electing to do? The marrow is pulling down towards the marrow. Yeah. Down. All right. Then I will just take the assist and go towards the marrow. Okay. Um, so that puts you like basically we'll we'll call it like five feet. You're in melee range of that particular mm -hmm. one. Um, how about Dunavant? I will draw my weapon, and uh, I've got water breathing, so I'm going to attempt to uh, maybe hop into the water where the and grab the rope and okay. allow it to pull, and allow it to pull me towards it. Sounds good. Um, and then Teasley. Uh Teasley's not carrying anything heavy, so I don't think he sinks. I think I'm kind of staying near the top. You're gonna swim and kind of tread the water right there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I know I have water breathing on me, so I'm not working hard at it. But I, I think I'm not gonna sink unless I try to sink. Yeah. That sounds. Your little good. Morticia dress is a big pop lollipop at this point. Yeah. With all my business just hanging out the bottom. As it uh, pulls down with the harpoon, it is going to take one claw attack, we'll say, at Humboldt. But why do you say at Humboldt? And because of the way I have this set up, it's going to be temperamental. Ooh, that would be a miss. I'll use my DM reroll here. We're getting towards the end of the session. And not any better. So that is a miss. That'll bring us to Teasley, who's up at the surface of the water. All right. And how deep are they? They are about 20 feet deep at this point. Okay. Um, 
I think that uh, because they're in water, they have resistance to this, but I'm going to firebolt the nearest one. Sounds good. Because I don't have a lot else that's combative. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I just want to check something real quick as you cast that. Um, so the eight is uh, going to miss. Mm -hmm. It's not water. It's gasoline. So it, it uh, I mean, the firebolt does, yeah, kind of, uh, you know, the water seems to kind of displace the firebolt. It does shoot through it. Um, it's just like kind of like a torpedo that just narrowly misses the thing. Um, yeah. But um, there... You, you know, you're you're a sorcerer. Your magical abilities are a little innate, and so you're pretty in tune with them. But there's something weird about this spell casting. It feels different. Um, you give me give me a let's call it an Arcana check. Okay. You're just not sure uh, what it is, but there is something that you feel that is different, and you just can't quite. You maybe you need a little more practice or test this out okay. a little bit more to like really identify what. But it's going something. On. It's something that's affecting my magic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. And all right, uh, that'll bring us to humbled. Uh, and it didn't. It didn't happen with my magic when I shot it at the the jelly. Oh, you did do that, didn't you? Uh, give me, like, give me like a retroactive Arcana check for that one. Okay. Yeah. And it, I mean, if all I know is it's like the same, it's doing the same kind of thing. That's fine. Yeah, you're. It almost feels like maybe there's some other influence on your magic that you're not a hundred percent in control of, but you're not sure what that is or what it means. Well, what's control anyway? It, it's maybe if, maybe if you are you of the sorcerer type that has the wild surges or what? No, I'm I'm that I, I'm the type, god right? touched. Yeah, god touched. Yeah, okay. The divine um, soul. Uh, sounds good. Humbled, it is your go. Uh, so humbled will bonus action rage. Uh, he will uh start swinging his stick through the water. And uh, go reckless uh, to hopefully offset the penalty of being underwater. Sounds good. And we are a raging strike. And so I think normal attack. A 17. 17 will hit. Uh, that will be damage. Normal. And then that. So I do 19 on the first hit. And then I swing again. Yeah, that'll hit. And then I do... That is... What? Uh, 11 on the second hit. All right, this one's looking pretty rough as... Uh... That's what was that was with the staff that you're kind of bonking them around with. Yep, that was a that was a bonking into the bunk. It looks Double pretty bunk. disoriented as you kind of knock and kind of jam that staff right into his face. Um, that's gonna bring us to our reef shark, Galileo. So, uh, Humboldt's right next to one right yeah there's one that's basically point blank with both humbled and donovan um they're they've been kind of pulled down by this uh harpoon that he has shot into it um the other two are kind of spaced out on opposite sides of them uh kind of solo well i'm going for the one that's near humbled because i have pack tactics so i'll get advantage on my roll Sounds good. Yep, you have advantage then on your attack. Oh, man. What kind of plus and do you get? I have a plus four, so that'll be 
what, 13 then? Well, I think he just rolled 2d20, so he had a 4 and a 5, so 9 is actually the result of one of those. So, um, Okay. Unless you want to use a reroll, you do have two rerolls in the pot. I'll use one. All right. Do I still get the pack tactics then? Yep. It'll be a reroll at advantage. Oh, yeah. Here's the crit. So uh, double your attack dice. Okay, that would be a... Um, 2d8 plus 2? 2d8 plus 2. Oh, nice. So, so what was that? Total. You managed to bite into this one, and um, he's dazed a bit. Your teeth wrap around its torso and clench down um and you just feel like his rib cage kind of buckle and um uh, starts to kind of float <laughs> upward bleeding out lifeless he just releases the harpoon he's dead two left um that's going to bring us to the marrow um one of them going to go after you, Galileo. Um, swims up to you. And is going to attack with its... Yeah, probably gets within range of your thing, uh, Humboldt, so go ahead. Bonk. Uh, I am now at disadvantage. Oh, oh man! Oh, fuck you! Nice. <laughs> can't can't nice. argue with that. <laughs> uh, we will we will dump uh some smite into this one just because I want to hit the button. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna do. We'll spend th three of the charges. And hit that. Oh boy. 33 points of damage. <laughs> wow. Okay. He's still up, but he's considering some things. Um, moves into range of Humboldt. Or, um, sorry, uh, Galileo. It's going after the shark. So, first, a claw attack. It kind of sh has to shake its head a little bit, try to get back into this. Oh, that's going to be a miss. Uh, second attack is going to be a bite. See if I can roll above a five would be. Oh, they're going to give me a crit. All right, so that is going to be 2d8 plus four. Ooh. So 18 points to the reef shark. But uh, you're still a reef shark, so that's good. Uh, second one, second marrow is up. Gonna do a similar thing. Swims over um, near you, Galileo, um, and attacks. Bite and a claw. First the bite, or first the claw. Sorry. Oh, oh my uh -oh. goodness! Uh, another one. So this one is four d four plus four. So that's gonna be four. 15 points of damage. So I'm no longer a reef shark. And then the, um, I think you have what, 10, 10 points basically that roll over from the shark onto Galileo. And then the bite attack. This So this is against your AC. Um, 19 to hit. It hits. That is... 10 points of damage. Oh. And then that brings us to Donovan. Uh, how close are these marrow? They're more or less... You can be within melee of them if you want. 
They're okay. Like 10 feet away from where you're currently at in the boat. They're 10 feet away from me. Okay. Um, I am going to bonus action. Uh, do this bonus action. I am going to do compelled duel on one of them. Sounds good. Wisdom save. For me, here plays nice on that. Uh, not so good. You got it. He fails. Okay, and then I will attack him twice, but have him focus on me instead of the shark. Uh, is this a disadvantage attack? Your ring overcome that? I don't know. Does ring of free action? Have any effect on that? Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I'm not restrained or anything, so it might. I don't know if it does. I don't think that it I... does on this encumbrance. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see. A long sword, yes. A long sword would be at disadvantage. Okay. Okay. Ooh, okay. Roll a d6. Any rerolls in the pot? Oh, there is a reroll. There's one yeah, reroll. Re yep. He's a reroll. Okay. I will do that. And so 13 will just miss, but no need to chance it with a critical fail. Okay. Uh, then my second attack. Fifteen. You know what? 13 hits. Sorry. 13 hits? Yep. Both of oh. these attacks will hit. Okay. Whoops. Okay, here. All right. Damage. Now, uh, I guess a question. Did you compel duel the injured one or the non-injured one? Uh, you know what? Let's leave it up to a dice roll because... I mean, it would be whichever one was probably furthest away from me. Yeah, to, that sounds fair. To, to kind of bring it, bring it to me, to get it off of him. So sounds good. Uh, let's see. I'll say I'll roll a d4. One or a two would be the injured one. Three or the four will be the uninjured one. So uninjured one. Okay. Uh, so what? Total of fifteen points. 15 points. Sounds good. There is blood in the water. That's and... what I was afraid of. <laughs> we move to the top of the order, and it is Teasley's turn. All right. Uh, I'm going to start off and throw a, a healing word at uh, uh, Galileo. For six points of healing, uh, and then I will use my action to firebolt uh, the one that Galileo and Humboldt are near. And would hit a 15. 15 will hit. Would be five points of fire damage, independent of whatever weird thing is happening. Give me another Arcana check. Um, this one will have a little bit of a reduced DC. Starting to pick up on some things. Okay. 13. Okay. So this third attempt, as you cast the Firebolt, um, you feel like you might be able to alter the energy type of your firebolt like like for a for a moment um you kind of see it kind of go from a flaming ball to sort of a like a like a ball of dripping acid and then back to a okay. firebolt but you feel like if if you focused and sustained that you might be able to tap into whatever this weird thing around you is that's changing that you might be able to exert control over that and alter the spell. Okay. 
So um, just let me know if you wish to do that um, on, yeah, this, uh, on this or any other spell that you might cast if you want to try to change it. Well, um, I only have two spells that deal damage, and they're both cantrips, so we'll see. Yeah, sounds good. Um, cool. That'll hmm. bring us to Humboldt. Uh, so Humboldt is going to recklessly attack the one that he had smacked when it was swimming over before. Uh, so the one he had dealt some damage to, he's going to try and hit again. Reckless to negate the disadvantage, so normal-ish. Nice. <laughs> Holy <laughs> mackerel, okay. Three in a row. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that's going to crit... Uh, that's going to crit for this, and it's going to crit for this. So, uh, that's 29. Brings that one down. Uh, so then he'll kind of like flounder water over towards the other one that's, uh, near Donovan, and then try and smack that one. Uh, reckless, normal. Uh, for 21 to hit, normal damage, nice. does 15 points there. All right. And then we'll bonus action, hit it with the back end of the staff. Maybe. 13? Uh, 13 hits. hits. And then that's this one. For another 13 points of damage there. Sounds good. That one's still up. Galileo. Uh, Galileo fires Guiding Bolt at it. Okay. Give me one sec. Check. Okay. Uh, go ahead and cast the spell. Ooh, nice. That hits. Okay. So that takes care of the last of the marrow. And as you strike it, uh, all of these three creatures, bit of blood in the water, their bodies kind of float just for a moment, like kind of up to the surface, and then uh, become kind of waterlogged and begin to just start to sink um, and disappear into the darkness of the sea floor. Um, before I forget, I want uh, Galileo, please give me an Arcana check. Okay. Um, you kind of like Teasley, I would say this happened back when you were trying to cast the water breathing spell, which you successfully cast. But um, as you were doing it, there it felt like there was something... Normally you just draw from the energy of nature and, you know, do this thing that's sort of natural, but you felt like there was a decision point in that spell as well. Um, although you didn't know <laughs> what other... What other avenues of this spell like you would like direct its energy but um there's something odd about it and you feel like perhaps you could have done something different with that spell but you're just not sure how to do that and so um this combat is over i'm just looking at the time and thinking we're probably at a good stopping point but uh we'll set it up like this um, you're maybe kind of looking for, uh, the sisters, you come up onto the rock maybe, and you'll discover that they aren't there. However, um, just to the northeast here, we'll say Galileo probably spotted this when, uh, you were swimming under the water as the shark. There does seem to be underwater a cavern down over here so we'll just leave you with that discovery because that might be where we kick off the next session when we plan that and figure out when we're going to do that um 
could be that's where you will find your sisters. Um, and so um, we'll leave it here. Um, if Why don't we end the session? Would you like to take a short rest? We'll say that there's a opportunity to do that here on this shelf. And we pull the boat up and see if we can make an attempt to fix it. You, um, you can, um, you don't have additional material necessarily put into it, but perhaps you can kind of redirect some of the, the weave from other parts that are maybe less substantial to kind of reinforce the very important bottom of the boat. Um, so Alex, as we're, as we're kind of like wrapping out of that, um, Humboldt will try and grab any of the harpoons that he can off of the bodies as they're kind of scattering and gather up those three ropes. Because I think you said they were harpoons with ropes. And if they're ropes, we might be able to use some of that in sure. the weave. Sure. And Teasley um, has 50 feet of rope as well that could go into go toward okay. that. So you got some spare parts here that you might be able to use there. Um, how, sorry, didn't catch that. I, I believe I have rope on me too. Okay. More than enough rope. Um, I'm going to want a skill check here. Um, let's call it is Teasley. Are you going to be sort of the main, um, maybe architect here? No, I've got no skills that lend themselves to okay. this. I just think it would be a good idea. Um, if this were wood, I'd be all over it, but, um, it's rope. Um, but I'm willing oh, to. I, if this was a lock that needed picking, I'd have it. I am. Um, so if we could turn this into a wooden lock, that's basically what the goal here. No, a uh, boat is actually where we're aiming. So I think we all just put our heads together and um, give it a try. I. I mean, I can have a go at it, but. I mean, more rope is is basically the key here. Just just keep more roping yes no man mendy uh tux no mending cantrip yeah right where's, exactly where's spugnor when you need him mm -hmm. that was one skill mm -hmm. um does anybody have proficiency in sleight of hand yes give me a no i'm hand. sorry i don't oh <laughs> nope, i i keep that's one of the things i always think teasley can do and he can't it would make sense that teasley would have it but teasley probably thinks nope. they've that's one of the things that he to wants to learn yeah. Um, so I would say, uh, let's call it a straight dexterity check from somebody. Well, I'm happy to give it to go. Thanks for the raid. I'm Butterbee. A Drake. And a 12. Um... You've got this thing patched up enough that it'll probably sail for a bit, um, but it's not. Is this not the is this considered quality. is this considered a fail? I would because say because I could use my favored by yeah. the gods. Okay, yeah, let's call it that. I'm, all right, I'm gonna do that and add to it. I can give you guidance and add seven to it because Brando Barris wants this to work. Okay. So nice. this, and if there's like a little bit of guidance in there, um, would a guidance is going to get it to a minimum of twenty? Yeah, it's going to be a twenty. So uh, it goes from like I don't know, maybe your god is like going to put a little, you know, see Cuthbert had his whole big show. Like the least I can do is maybe tighten up some knots that weren't quite <laughs> <laughs> right. So Teasley thinks. Teasley's doing a great job, and there's like this like invisible hand of his god is just like kind of tightening or undoing knots and like kind of fixing the sloppy work as you move along. And then as you look at the finished product, hey, looks great. Um, you, you you see Teasley turn and give a high five to nobody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So hey, a thank you for the raid, uh, Drake takes. Uh, really appreciate it. I know you've been playing some Princess of the Apocalypse. We're we're playing through, I guess, I don't know, the inspiration of uh, such modules uh, a bit. We're t Temple of Elemental Evil, and we just hit the um, elemental node from the the old one. I know there's nodes in the Princess of the Apocalypse. Here's the, the old school one. So um, we're just about at the end of our session. They're patching up a boat that had been harpooned by a couple of marrow. 
um, and have a lead on some half elf adventurer types that they were looking for up in this quadrant of uh, the node. And I think that might be a probably a bunch of RP that is going to take probably a while to, to get through. So <laughs> it makes sense for us to do that in a different session. So um, we're rolling with static groups at this point. So it's much easier for us to kind of just take our times with these because we know we're going to have to say, we're going to be bringing the same little pocket of characters back together. So uh, we'll do that next time. Um, I don't think we've talked about dates and such, but we'll figure that out offline and figure out where we're at. Um, again, if y'all want to take a short rest here, um, you'd be able to do so with no consequence. So I think probably the only one that maybe really needs to do so would maybe be Galileo if you wanted to expend some spells, uh, hit dice or whatever. But we can hit Well, and, that. and get that. You get your wild shapes back, right? Or get wild shapes back, sure. So there's probably a little bit of a benefit there to, to do that. So we could do that offline here. Um I guess announcements for the rest of the week. Uh, what do we got going on? Tomorrow night, we've got DM Dave doing some Dragonlance, Rise of the Magistrate. That'll be tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Um, I think Joe T is going to be back here with Tragic Sides this week. Um, I commiserate with him a bit with uh, baby things. Baby has been not feeling so good, so I had a few, few weeks off, but uh, I think he's coming back with a game here on Thursday night. Um and then Friday night, we've got the continuation of a DCC RPG module that uh, Isaac started for us last week, the one who watches from below. And I don't know, I'm a set of eyeballs essentially right now, so I'm going to have to get my screen real tight so you can't see my <laughs> facial expressions. That's basically what had happened. See if I can find another rat to possess. So that'll be uh, Friday night at 7 p.m. We'll finish that up. And... To round out the week, uh, Storm King's Thunder um, with Casey is going to be Saturday night at 7 p.m. Uh, Central. So lots of things to check out on the channel. Um, if you had fun watching us here, consider joining us on Discord, where we do a lot of the recruiting for our games. Um, so you can either get into a community game like this, or a lot of the DMs on the channel will recruit directly from uh, the Discord. Um if you are exceptionally entertained by anything we do or, or really enjoy the channel, um, you could also uh, consider supporting us uh, via Patreon. So I'll throw that in there as well. Let's see. We should probably see if we've got any friends. We just got a raid from Drake Takes. So usually, usually uh, Tuesdays, I always remember dropping in on Drake at the last five minutes of his stream so uh let's pay it forward and find someone else that's just about done streaming that we can just you always see that disappointed look in their faces and they're like oh thanks for the raid but we're about to be done so uh, who do we got let's go in raid mm. behold role play go see them all right thanks everybody we will see you all soon.